man. Girl, you were scandalous, and I loved it. Yeah. Your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. For the big day, they're calling this the biggest travel day of the year. I didn't notice anything much except for a lot of construction. If they would just give the damn construction people off, then perhaps the traffic wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> Guess who's coming to the show today? The return of Jen, our former intern from Staten Island, who got cut last night from The Ultimate Hustler, that Dame Dash show on BET. I was busy watching the American Music Awards. Awards, Art, you forgot to call me about Jen's cutellation last night. I can watch it. You were watching American Music Awards? No, nah, I was You were out in the streets as usual. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, keep it where you got it. The advice hour, the question of the day, the celebrity gossip, the preparing for family, tomorrow, all the drama. Uh, it is what it is. Today is no different than any other day. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Oh, 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 oh. Shout out to the chocolate boy wonder. Haven't seen you in a while, Pete Rock. <clears throat> Shout out to CL Smooth, too. Those are legends right there. Mm -hmm. Turn this up. Show some respect. Ah, yeah. So we're working it out today. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. I just had a colonic. It's supposed to take care of all that. <laughs> Wow. It's one of the reasons wow. that I like to have them. You know, they wash that phlegm right out of your system. Today, because I always rate mine on a scale of one to five, I always ask my colon therapist at the end, okay, how did I do? On a scale of one to five, five being the best. I did a three today. And you know what she told me? She said, stop eating so much cheese. That's always been a problem. I know. But you know what? I'm really going to stop. I'm really going to stop. And now, because it was only a three today, and I'm very... Pardon the phrase, but very anal about it. You know, like I want it to be, I want it to be a five. Dog on it. Yes. So I'm not going to go back in three weeks. Like my, I'm going back next week. What? That's right. Get the rest of it out. 
And I'm not eating cheese tomorrow, which is going to be a struggle because that's part of my hors d'oeuvre selection. I'm in charge of hors d'oeuvres at Thanksgiving because not much change from the same old sappy, you know, all-American, uh, you know, Thanksgiving dinner with one exception. You know, white people have that green bean casserole from French's that you see on TV. It looks nasty. Black people get down with the collard greens and stuff. And if we have green beans, we don't call it that. We call them string beans seasoned with ham hock. Oh. We're having both at my house, the, the collard greens and the ham hock or, and the string beans. And then the white people have the pumpkin pie. The black people have the sweet potato pie. But aside from that, nothing changes from year to year. The same damn turkey, the same damn macaroni and cheese, the same damn, you know what I mean? So the only thing that's different to me is the dessert because pumpkin pie is traditional. But then what else do you have? Like for me this year, as opposed to having like a red velvet cake, I ordered red velvet cupcakes from Cake Man Raven over in Brooklyn. He's legendary. You know, so I ordered a bunch of those, you know. And, you know, some other stuff. And then the hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres change. And I, and I like to, you know, work it out for the hors d'oeuvres. Do you have hors d'oeuvre time at your house? Anybody in here? Do you have yeah. anything to eat before the main meal? Yeah. See, we're all foodies at my house. The, fooding, the eating starts at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. By the time we sit down to the actual dinner, and this year we really don't even have enough, we don't even have enough people for a sit down. It's actually going to be, you know, sit where you want and, you know. If we all want to congregate someplace, fine. I'm not going to put pressure on anybody. But we actually have food, dinner food, the turkey and stuff. The turkey gets carved like 5.30. When I was a kid, the turkey used to get carved at like 3 o'clock. What about you? 3 o'clock in the afternoon? So 5.30. But if we start breaking out the hors d'oeuvres at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm slowly pulling them out of the oven and, you know, arranging them on nice platters that I got from Costco that I'm going to throw away afterwards... I don't even use the good stuff anymore. Who feels like washing it afterwards? I got a party to go to tomorrow night, please. Plus, I've been drinking brown juice since 9 o'clock in the morning. There you go. I'm not, you know. And if you use your fine china, I don't know about you, but, you know, do you put that in the dishwasher? I don't even like to chance it, so I don't like to be bothered. I've gone from fine china to solo. <laughs> the, you know, the solo <laughs> plates and cups and stuff. <laughs> This is the big holiday travel day. Are you guys leaving uh, town? Or are you sitting in your house? Everybody's coming to you. What are you doing? Millions of Americans are hitting the road. Did you turn on the TV this morning and see all what's it doing? AAA is reporting that almost 37 million people are traveling during this holiday weekend. The, the whole weekend. And people are undeterred by snow. It's supposed to snow here in the New York tri-state area. Undeterred by expensive gas. Chicago has already felt it. The snow is supposed to be in the northeast as far down as, like, um, Virginia and the Carolinas. People don't care. People, uh, sky, uh, um, car rental prices are up a bit, and so are hotels. And they said that airline prices are up by 10%. People don't care. Between the tsunami and Wilma... And Katrina mm -hmm. and and people walking in places and just blasting the joint and, and drunk drivers hitting people throughout the last year and, and all that. People don't care. They want to be with the ones that they love at all costs because the, the, the world's about to end and you need a good meal. And they said that the airfares are going to be up about 10 percent, at least they say, until February. And people don't care. Hundreds of motorists down in, um, shout out to everybody listening to us in the Washington, Maryland area. I understand the Capitol Beltway was a mess this morning. S five o'clock this morning, a tanker carrying over 8,000 gallons of gas exploded oh. on, on I-95. That's a major thoroughfare. Hundreds of motorists were stuck in this. There were no injuries, thank God. The motorists, they say, closest to the scene, were told to abandon their car for fear from the authorities that there would be an even bigger explosion. Oh, my God. The road finally reopened three hours and 15 minutes later at 8.15. Do you know how much... that You can't keep your car running because you run out of gas. You're freezing. And how about this? Are you like this? When you realize that you're traveling in a car, all of a sudden you don't bring your gloves and your hat and your scarf. You just throw your coat on and walk out the door because you're in a car. Even if it's two degrees, you're in a car. And you're just, for some reason, not thinking. That's happened to me before. It happened, like, years ago where, yeah, I did have to think. I had to sit in the car. While I didn't have to get out and walk, 
we had to turn the car off and we were sitting for like two hours while somebody went to get somebody. A little deal that happened on the Jersey Turnpike, but it was so cold. So now whenever I go out, um, I always make sure that I have like a blanket in the back of the car and I always go out with gloves. It is so cold out. You got to be prepared. Like you might have to, you know, you might end up like Grizzly Adams. Do you remember that show? A spokesperson for Amtrak says that um, her name is Tracy Connell, and she said 125,000 people last year traveled Amtrak the day before Thanksgiving, and that's up 80% from 69,000 people um, who ride the train on an average day to 125,000 plus the 80%. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of robbing and stealing going on on the train, too. <laughs> you better keep one eye open, keep one eye on your stuff. Don't sleep. And leave those drugs alone. All you um, yam carriers, you bird chasers, you know, because they will sick you, the dogs on a train situation in a minute. Let's go to the telephone. Are we going to be all sticky and gooey with happy holidays all day today? Mm. I guess. Yeah, it's the, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Hello. Hello. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, too. Good. Who's calling? Oh, uh, this is Obi. Hi, Obi. Hi. Listen, uh, I just wanted to give you a, um, a hearty amen to that, um, to the advice you gave people who are traveling yeah. on the roads. Make sure that they have uh, one of those little safety kits. Yeah, that, too. You know, those things come in handy. It, it, this, the very same thing happened to me and happened to you. I mean, broke down Jersey Turnpike. Yep. Flat tire. Yeah. No and, gloves. And, rain. And listen, and make sure there's enough gas in your phone because if you rely on the gas charger, that means that the battery's got to be working and you just never know. Right. Yeah. Right. Shout out to Artie, by the way. Oh, um, his performance is it this weekend? Oh, Artie, when are you performing at uh, the Nork Symphony Hall? December 10th. Oh, December 10th. My parents and Miss Gladys, Art's mom, they're all going to be sitting, the three of them together in the front row. Wow. Yeah. And how long's the run? Um, in New Jersey, just for that day that's coming to New York. Yeah, he, Art's just getting his acting sea legs going. Then he's going to be performing in New York at the Beacon Theater. Oh, great. When is that date, Arthur? That hasn't been set yet. And the Apollo. Oh, and the legendary Apollo. He's going to rub the log. So he better work. And rub his log. He better work. <laughs> yes, yeah, say, Art, that's so good. Artie, are you cooking anything for the holidays? Thank you, Obi. All right, thank you, man. Bye-bye. Miss Gladys is doing everything. I'm not going to be in town. I'm going away. That's right. You're going to Miami. Yeah. Mm. How's your hors d'oeuvres? Can you taste them here? Absolutely yeah. not. I already got my first round of hors d'oeuvres for tomorrow. And I, you know, I didn't make everything. How are you? Fabulous. Are you cooking? Yes. What are you making? Hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, see, what, what hors d'oeuvres do you make? I do chickpea hummus, the red pepper aioli. Love this. Black love bean hummus. salsa. Love this. Mm, love hummus. Yeah. See, I bought my hummus from the food town, and I ordered my chicken wings from this place called Aiello's in the city. I bought, I ordered 25 of them, and they smell at the studio or something fantastic right now. Well, I'm doing desserts as well. I'm doing um, coconut cupcakes, red velvet cupcakes. Oh, wow. Sweet potato pie. Wow. And um, cheesecake. Yeah. The desserts and the hors d'oeuvres are the most interesting. The dinner is the same old dinner. And who's cooking the main yeah. event? My cousin, Medea. She can have that, Let me though. give her a shout out. Yeah, hey, Medea. She, she throws down. Yeah. She does oxtails, hams, roasts, mm. um, turkey, mm. turkey wings. We have everything, and we have a great time. We karaoke. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, see, we don't have a family event. I mean, I have Whitney Houston primetime from three years ago. It, it, there's, <laughs> there is no party at home without showing the Whitney Houston Diane Sawyer. And a little later on in the evening in the grown-up room, I do have the bootleg of Get Rich or Die Trying. So, hey, everybody, keep it where you got it. Wendy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Why can't you say? That's all, baby. Girl. That's all I'm asking you is why can't you say? The Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, what's up? This is Junior Reed. What's you doing? No, how you doing? How you doing? Yes, that was a good one. How you doing? That, 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 yes, that how was you good. Doing? That was good. How you doing? <laughs> Woo, it's the Wendy Williams experience, everybody. The one and only. For you people from out of town who are back in New York, the tri-state area for the holidays, how you doing? Yeah, welcome back to town, homie Stromy. It's been a while since you've hit tri-state soil. It's good to have you back. 
and happy holidays to everybody who's listening. The office is here closed uh, very, very early today. There, it's like a ghost town around here. I just sent somebody on a dots run. I'm hoping the candy store is open downstairs in the lobby. What the hell? You know Starbucks is open in the lobby. They get their money. Oh. They don't care. <laughs> it could be a minute before New Year's Eve strikes. They're in there. I have passes, by the way, in this break for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is shaping up to be so wonderful. And I was suggesting yesterday, you know, if you work in an office environment where you all can actually party together, then why not make Dons and Divas tickets, shout out to all the bosses, gifts for the holidays. That's your, that, because I'll tell you, we have about 15 people, including interns, on the staff of the Wendy Williams Experience. But about 10 of those people are steady players like, let's have our Christmas party, let's get together. And if I wasn't actually at the helm of this party, this would be something that would be, this is where our holiday party is going to be. Up in the premium seats at the Don's and Divas Extravaganza. I'm buying everybody tickets, and it's five hours of open bar. So, you know, question mark entertainment and face down. They've taken care of the liquor. You all dr- uh, drink responsibly, by the way, and drive safely. Um, um, it just, you know, I mean, it's, it's just a suggestion for uh, the holiday time of year. So I have those passes in just a, just a moment. Artie, also later on this show, I have passes for to check out my Artie, Life of the Party, on stage. In his uh, big debut, let me t- let me just tell you what my artist play is called. It's called "Who's Gonna Save Me?" It's time to tell your secret. Oh. And this is how they describe it on the on the giveaway sheet: a thought provoking true story that will make you laugh and cry, featuring the Wendy Williams experience, Artie Life of the Party. Arthur, I thought you wanted people to know you as Arthur J. Evans. That, that- I didn't write that one. They, they wrote that. So. I said it the the thespian way in well, on the commercial that I cut exactly. for it. And I wrote that part. I wrote that one. Oh, well, even if you didn't write it, I would know oh. that as an actor, you don't want to be arty life of the party. Thank you. You get So you, you get it. It's you not get, it. get rich or die, try and star in 50 cent j j g damn unit. Exactly. Exactly. You get Curtis Jack- 50 Jackson. Yes, exactly. So as long as you say, you, you, you know in your head. Arthur J. Evans. Yes. And he's going to be at the Nork Symphony Hall with his band of merry men on Saturday, December 10th. We have those passes coming up later on in the show. We're so busy here during the holiday season. We got our WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. We are working it out on that one. That's December 17th at the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis featuring the full holiday buffet, live entertainment. And you can get your tickets now at Ticketmaster, 212-307-7171. Proceeds benefit the anti-domestic violence programs Safe Horizon and Day One. And, um, you know, we'll all be there. Me and Artie and Vaughn Harper and whatnot. It's the WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. Not to be confused with the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's two different things. Two glorious parties, but I just don't want to confuse you. I know it seems confusing. Mm. So close together. You know? And they're both going to be so grandiose and fabulous. Oh, my gosh. I got to tell you. I'm surprised we haven't started giving away Christmas Party with a Purpose tickets yet. But we're giving away Dons and Divas tickets right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, and I'm not taking, like, a caller number 10 or anything like that. I like to just go to the phone and do like a mini interview and I realize that people can lie about what they do for a living and hey that's on you if you're going to lie and say you're a doctor you just come to the party and rep like a doctor you know what I'm saying and be honest with whoever it is that you take home I mean you know what I'm saying don't continue to lie please you know don't don't continue we just don't want any bum behind bums I mean you know a Don is a man who's doing the damn thing, whatever his station in life. I don't care if you're driving cabs, if you're, if you know, you're you're cleaning sewers, or if you're, you know, in the operating room. You know, I revere the DR period. But I, you know, if you're Don in your situation out, then you're a Don. I'm not going to get all technical like that. Divas, that's a sister who's doing it for herself, with or without the benefit of a man or or whatever. You know, doing it for yourself. You can pay your own bills. You can get that thing going. 
a babe in total control of herself. Yeah. That's a bitch. Well, no, but she, here's the other thing. Here's the other side of it. Uh -oh. You know, if you happen to be a chicken head poaching off somebody's husband, I hope you're doing the damn thing, too, because I guess that would be, make you like a diva chicken head. Yeah. And you're invited to the party as well. Don't be one of these, you know, you make sure that you're learning from the Kim Porter school of, um, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, don't be out here all stupid. Have a plan. Getting up with a married man who could barely afford to take care of his own five kids by two different babies' mothers, the second one he married, but he has a mistress on the side, and you're barely scraping by. You are not a diva. No, no, no. In school, but flunking out. You are not a diva. No. December 22nd is the Dons and Divas extravaganza. It's the black party. People are getting very technical. I was listening to the girls returning phone calls off the, um, off the, you know, the, the pink room hotline for the Dons and Divas party. A guy was like, you know, and I'm bringing my girl with me and she wants to know if she wears a black dress, can she wear, you know, she's wearing festive shoes with multiple colors. So the girls asked me, I was like, sure. As long as the torso is blacked out. You know, black, it's a black party. Yeah. No, it's the black party. I'm wearing black, too. It's the ultimate grown and sexy affair. I can't tell you where. I can tell you some of our sponsors, then I'm going to the phone. Demetrio Furs. Thank you, Demetrio. Love them. They're on 30th Street here in Manhattan. There's a lot of stuff going on in the Fur District, so you need to go where you're familiar. Demetrio. You can tell him Wendy sent you. Why not? Courtesy Lincoln Mercury. Love you guys up in the Bronx, the Federico family. Armadale Vodka. It's Dame Dash's vodka. We're going to have one of the ultimate hustler uh, losers who happens to be one of our ex-interns. She's really not a loser. She just was voted off last night. She's coming in later on today. Remy Martin, by the way, is coming in later on today. Yeah, tonight uh, me and Remy are going to be doing the damn thing in Roselle, New Jersey at the Palooza Club. Remy's performing. I'm hosting. That's in, in Roselle. That's tonight, though. Another sponsor of the Dons and Divas, a thing called Fat Cribs International. The name speaks for itself. They get you the Fat Cribs. They're international. They're on 145th Street in Harlem. Mickey works up there. She's a real nice girl and her crew. B&B Jewelers in Wayne, New Jersey. Ben and Eddie. If you shop where I shop, you know, at that Home Goods at that little plaza, then you know B&B is right there in the plaza. Seagram's. Helen, what would we do without you? Thank you, Seagram's. Thank you for sponsoring. Ray Zach, you've been Ooh. with us for all of our Dons and Divas. This is our sixth one. They've been with us since number one. So let's go to the telephone and uh, see who's going to win. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey, what's up, Wendy? Hey, how are you? I'm doing all right. What's your name? Uh, Dave. You sound cute. Yeah, I am. Now, let me start. <laughs> you, you, most of all, you sound employed. Yeah, I am. That's true. That too. How old are you, David? 36. And what do you do? I'm a computer tech at a law firm in Manhattan. Oh, and you're single? Uh, no, I'm not. Married? Yes. Damn. <laughs> are you bringing your wife to the party? Yes, because I just called her and told her to listen. Well, great. All right, now. Well, so then congratulations. All right. You I all appreciate are, it. You all are coming there like a married couple who likes to have some damn fun. Yeah, we need some fun. Exactly. Do you? Do you are, can your wife please wear a plunging neckline? I mean, do you have to? You know, do you have to look? I mean, I mean, you know, it's 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 looking. You're not dead. You're just married. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, she has the look, and Excellent. she's gonna wear it. Excellent. Yeah, she'll give you that nice plunging neckline, Love nice that. tight fitting dress. Love that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. All right, now. There's nothing worse than a man who tries to make rules on how his woman dresses. No, nah, she wouldn't have it. Oh, <laughs> exactly. And there's nothing wor wor worse than a woman who goes along with it. Right. Yes, dear. <laughs> All right, David. So we'll see you, you and your wife at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Yes, you will. And by the way, we're having a whole separate room that's going to play nothing but house music all night, too. All right. Some of that good stuff. Oh, me. gosh. We love that. All right. All right, David. So hang on for a moment. I'll see you December 22nd. More details to come. All right. All right. Take it easy. Take care. I didn't want to tell him that that's probably going to be, you know, unofficially dubbed the How You Doing Room. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. The music in the How You Doing Room is going to be very serious. Oh Five hours of open bar, too. Oh, all soup. <laughs> Woo, it's just going to be a fun party. Everybody's invited. I 
I got a call on a technicality towards the end of the show yesterday. My feelings were kind of hurt. I rode home thinking about this. Shout out to the lesbians. Why wouldn't you be invited to the party? Oh, yeah. Why do we have to, like, send a formal invitation to everybody? I don't... Uh, uh, 28 to 80. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you can't... You know, 21 to 81. Yes. Deaf, dumb, blind, black, white, Indian, uh, gay, straight, uh, you know, three legs, one leg. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? This is the Dons and Divas extravaganza. We're not discriminating. We only ask of one thing, and that is that you wear black in solidarity of the experience. And that you behave. And that you behave after that five hours of open bar... Because I know 30 minutes into it, I'm going to be out of order. Yeah. 30 minutes into the open bar, I'm going to be out of order. I'm not carrying a handbag. And I'm having one of our interns, Haley, on coat duty. Yes. Haley, just keep an eye on my coat all night. Just make, just please, yes. just keep an eye on my coat all night. So that means Haley can't drink. I'm not making any rules. All I'm saying is that you know what's going to happen. Oh, yes. Yeah. Drink sensibly. Yeah, Haley. Drink sensibly. <laughs> and I have a backup for Haley, too, as quiet as it's kept. Nicole. Oh. Yeah. Haley's on coat, <laughs> and Nicole's on Haley to be on coat. Gotcha. And also my drink. Yes. You know, don't, don't let anybody drop anything in my drink. Mm -hmm. No Mickeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haley's on drink and coat, and Nicole's on Haley on drink and coat. There you go. Say? Yes. Because otherwise you have to down your drink real fast. You know how like somebody says, you know, let's go over, let's go over to the dance music room or whatever. And I'll say, okay, but there'll be some drink left. Yeah. I'll say, but I only want to be over there for a second. Then I want to come back and finish my drink. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get up, a lot of times, you know, like, especially if you're paying for drinks. Like, this is five hours of free open bar. You're forced to quickly down your drink and then get up and go yeah. and forget about it. Yeah. You're all messed up. Forget about it. Drinking. Yeah, drinking. Drinks too fast. Mm -hmm. You got to pace yourself. Well, Dave and his wife are going to be there. Oh. I got some more tickets and already Life of the Party play passes and stuff. Keep it where you got it. It's the experience on BLS. Wendy Williams, you don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You gonna blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. More talk, less music. <laughs> At least here in New York. Hey, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. I'm just getting my latte together, you know, from the Starbucks. Let's go to the phone and talk to people, see what people are doing. Um, I wanted to talk about the American Music Awards. Um, I turned it on last night um, just as, uh, once again, just like the Vibe Awards. Pharrell was on stage yes. performing with Gwen Stefani. What was the purpose of her being there? She's in the song. I know she is, but all she says is... Um, yeah, I got, you got a guy. Like yeah, and, 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 you know, the more she said it, the more I was getting turned off to her because she holds her hands like in the devil sign, like how a lot of times when white people, a lot of times when you, you know, think you're really doing it and getting it down, you hold that devil sign up like yo, 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 yeah. and then you pooch your lips and then you get like this, this, this. Try like this ghetto sneer on your face that really it's not doing anything but making people like me like I'm like damn Gwen I love you just for being Gwen you really don't have to try to be black yes and I just wanted her to get off the stage mm. for a minute there I wasn't liking her last night we're back in love today though oh good yeah. who saw the American Music Awards let's go to the phone actually I have people on the line what am I hit line number six Valerie's there. She's 40. Oh, she hung up. Um, Hello. Hi. Hi, Wendy. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. And you? Is this Shamika? Yes. Hey, Shamika. What's going on? So, um, we'll do the winning later, apparently. How, how are the holidays going? Oh, so far, so good. I ain't really worried about the holidays because I'm going on a cruise next week. Oh, how fabulous. Where are you so going? I want to eat all that food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, where are you going? Um, I'm going to Cozumel and Ocho Rios and the Cayman Islands. Oh, we did that tour. What boat, did, what boat are you going on? Carnival. Oh. Yeah, mm. so the holidays, I ain't really too worried. Christmas is yeah. more bigger. Yeah. So do you have at least certain times that um, you're going to do the winner Pro for the dime? Probably in uh, the 4 o'clock hour. 4 o'clock hour? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, tell everyone happy holidays. Okay. And you keep up the good work. And you too. Take, uh, take care. Enjoy yourself with your cruise. Thank you. Bye, Shamika. 
Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Why are you doing it at four? Why can't you do it now? Oh, my gosh. Come on. I've been calling forever. Oh. Did you, see, did you at least see the American Music Awards? I did. Oh, I don't like the way Jada looked. For some reason, <gasps> she looks so much older. She looks so hard. She looks yes. like a straight-up dude. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Yo, right. Jada Pinkett is turning into a man right before our very eyes. Stop and I know it. the whole how you doing thing, but the older yeah. she gets, the more manly she gets. Absolutely. And she's a pretty girl. Yeah, she's she a gorgeous. She rough. Yeah, real rough. <laughs> so hard. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was just very, very boring. It was boring. Yeah, it wasn't really something I wanted to taste into. And I got there too late. Apparently, I missed Mariah Carey. Oh, yeah, I didn't see her either. Damn. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, thanks for listening and calling. Wendy. Have a good day. Wendy. I'm sorry. Bye. Bye. I I mean, we got to sign times. We just... Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. Hey. I wanted to um, win the um, tickets to the Divas party. In the 4 o'clock hour. All right. Yeah. Okay, call back at 4? Yeah, when I say the call, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Here's the thing, because we're short-staffed today. Um, We're always short-staffed. Why are we always short-staffed? I don't know. So there's nobody back there screening the calls. They feel like Friday, too. So we're kind of, yeah, it is like a Friday. People are in their cars, Mm -hmm. driving. A lot of the interns didn't, you know, come in today. I know one thing. Remy Martin's coming in later on. That's always going to be fun. Hood talk with Remy Martin. Mm -hmm. I thought that Eve looked great last night. I mean, you know, and that's... I know you're going to say, look who's talking. Okay, we're past me. Now, can I just talk for once? It's difficult to get Eve to look really, really good. I mean, she's a perfect example of, you know, money really does make it happen for a person that you shut up. You know, she's gotten all new Hollywood teeth and I always like the way her hair looks, you know, on the show and last night on the American Music Awards on her TV show and also it takes away from that big chin that she's got going on and that big forehead. I mean, come on, let's talk. And you can look at the radio all you want. I know what I am. And when I forget, you all constantly remind me. And I wear that. I lie on that sword like the woman I am. And I also realize that the most beautiful part of a person is inside. And that's from Eve to me to you. But can I for once talk about somebody's looks without you all looking at the radio like, look who's talking. It's me. I'm talking. The half man, half what? Now, now that we're over that, can we please talk? Even Art gave me the look like, I can't believe you're talking like this. No, let's be real. That's right. Eve is not a good-looking woman. Not at all. And she does not have body. No. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But she's sweet on the inside. No, how, well, we, no, because we don't, we don't know her uh, that much from the inside. I, I met her once. She was very nice. She was very nice. So she is sweet on the inside. But here's the thing. Money has done wonders for Eve. Money has done wonders for Eve. Shout out to money. Shout out to money. (laughs) Eve thanks you. She had on the green dress last night. That didn't take much. She got rid of those damn nasty ghetto tattoos on her cleavage. Just with the dermablend. Just temporary. You know. She knows where she has to go. She knows where the money is in Hollywood. The white people. Mm. Aligned herself with Gwen Stefani. They go in and out of, you know, biting each other's style. Oh, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. We see it for what it is. I don't remember her teeth being mangled, but she clearly got the old ones broken off and the new ones installed. Yes, yes. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. The only thing about Eve is that you got to keep things quiet on the habit tip. Oh. Because your business is all out. (laughs) And I'm watching it all, just like the old lady in the window. I'm watching the whole block. Eve's about as sloppy as Lindsay Lohan and those girls when it comes to that. What? Oh, yeah. Not, oh, yeah. No, for real. Yeah, yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? Is what is that? A, all of a sudden, if it's a Philly connection, or all of a sudden you want to connect? I'll wait for you to stop, but you keep going. Oh, 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 Comedian stretching a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but my cadence, I'm not speaking fast. Stop. So you take your time with your coffee, like the old lady in the window. Yes. that's right. Can I help you cross the, the street? The hood is watching. Oh. <laughs> 
Wendy, man. I have a boyfriend. I've been with him for maybe a little over three years. And he just now told me that he has a child out there somewhere that may be like five or six years old. It's Wendy, the greatest show on earth. Wendy Williams Experience. All righty, everybody. Welcome to Advice Hour here on the Wendy Williams Experience. And, um... Also coming up this hour, uh, I have some tips if you are the host of your Thanksgiving and also if you are the guest going to somebody else's house, the do's and don'ts. Uh, but let's do Wendy's Medical Minute now. You know all that coughing that I do? Well, it turns out that coughing actually helps during a heart attack. I'm not making an excuse for myself. I'm just, you know, passing this on to you. Coughing uh, forcibly if you think that you might be having a heart attack, might save your life. It expels air in groups of, now this is how you do it, cough in groups of five. One group every one or two seconds could do the trick, they say. The act of coughing creates a pumping action that can push blood through the body to the brain, keeping you going until help arrives. And that advice from me is to you, courtesy of the American Academy of Anti-Aging and Medicine. So, cough, like me. Yes, and, <clears throat> and live. And live, right, cough and live. Now, I passed along this advice to you about two months ago, but I'm always getting um, questions regarding the morning after pill. We, you know, you all, many of you get in these pickles where, you know, you don't know what to do and so on and so forth. And I happen to have pulled this out of Sexual Health Magazine. And it's about the early option pill. Now, you know, this is the pill that you take to induce miscarriage. In other words, the abortion pill. Now, according to Sexual Health, the pros of this pill are that it's non-surgical. And also you have privacy because you take the pill at your home and not at a public place like your doctor's office, a surgery room, or a clinic. The cons, the negatives about the um, abortion pill. Number one, according to the magazine, you can only take the pill when you're pregnant seven weeks or less. Number two, it can be painful. It's like a mini labor that a woman who chooses this option will feel. You suffer a lot of cramps or you know this firsthand, right? Mm -hmm. But you, it passes, and then everything is fine. Everything's fine. Number three, it doesn't always work. Oh. And you could need a surgical procedure to pull out the last thigh bone. Still with you, still with the... I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, you, you, a little something might be left up in there, and they might have to operate anyway. And this, this is the final con in the list of five cons about the abortion pill. Doctors have less experience with the various reactions than they, you know, regarding this pill than they do medical, you know, surgical abortions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you be careful out there and, and just, just use a damn condom. Just just use a condom and, and then you take the birth control pill or something. Anyway, all right, let's hit the telephones because it is advice hour. D is on line number two. She's 43 years old, separated. Oh, D hung up? Mm -hmm. T well, Tina is on line four, and she's a lesbian in a relationship. Oh. And, and Tina is the one cheating. She's 26. Hey, Tina. Hi. Okay, so how long have you been in your relationship? Uh, four years. And you're the one cheating? No, I'm not. Oh, your girlfriend's cheating on you? Yes. Do you know this for a fact? I don't know for a fact... But what happened was a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. I had all her cell phone calls uh, forwarded to the house phone. And you did this and, to try to catch her in something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, she says that the, her and the girl are just friends, but I don't, I don't believe it. Is this the girl that you suspected all along? <sighs> did I, su did I su suspect, suspect this particular girl all along? Like, my girlfriend? Did you suspect that the girl that she's cheating with, or allegedly cheating with, did you suspect that this particular girl is, is cheating with your girlfriend all along? Um, no. Okay. What did you hear when the calls were forwarded to the house to make you still want to stay on this path? I mean, just pretty much. It wasn't nothing. Like, she was like, are you busy? 
Because she thought I was her. Okay. So she was like, are you busy? And just stuff like that. All right. Well, you have nothing to, to go on. So, you know, if you keep snooping, you'll probably find something. Because, um, you know, you know, you got to trust your gut. But uh, so far, I don't hear anything that you have something to go on. And you might be just really paranoid. Or there might be cheating. So... I wish you well with your investigation. Okay. Line number Thanks, five. Wendy. You're welcome, Tina. I love your show. Thank you. Line number bye five. Bye. bye. Goose. Hmm. I thought she'd said that. Yeah. Line number five is Mika, and she's 22, and she and she dates a white coworker. Hi, Mika. Micah. Micah. Yes, a guy. Okay, how you doing? Wrong, huh? Okay, yes. Yeah, well, no, I just thought I. I mean, you have one of the, you know, those names that you don't know which. Yeah, the, the worst prophet in the Bible. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Art should have informed me of that. You read the Bible every night before you go to sleep, still, Arthur? Yes, I do. No, mm -hmm. I just pray. Well, who is Micah then, Art? I don't know who Micah is. I'm Micah. I'm Micah. That's Micah. <laughs> With the coworker, I call about the white girl. No, I know. I was You're just, I was just going back to the Bible thing. Oh, the Bible. You. That's a. That's a biblical name. Yes, it is. I asked you who Michael was. Art? Sorry. He doesn't know. Tell us about the white coworker. All right, so we go on a date last night, right? Okay. I'm kind of skeptical about, I don't want to say white people, but white girls. Because when I was in college, you know, they're kind of nasty and stuff in college. Mono, the drinking, the not cleaning up, all that stuff. Okay, you know? okay. So I went out on the date with her besides all that. Mm. So we do the first date kiss and stuff. I come home, you know, the next morning I wake up, I have hives. All over my body. Wow. All over my legs, all over my back. You're allergic over. to white women. Oh. <laughs> so what do you think I should do, Wendy? Do you think I got the highs because I kissed her? Or you think I got the highs because I got it's from something I ate? I, I think that you should probably... What did you eat? Anything out of the ordinary? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I mean, I had a Caesar salad and some wine. That's just about it. There might have been something nasty in the Caesar salad, like raw egg? Hmm. Have you eaten Caesar salads prior and never broken out? Well, uh, I was eating the Caesar salad at Justin, so I don't know. Oh, come on. Have you, are you, have you ever broken out from a Caesar salad before? No, never. Did you drink anything off, off a base? No, just the... Uh, um, Did you eat the no, white girl? Just wine and yeah, water. I, I know, I was going to get to that. Did you give the white girl a professional? Did you toss her salad? Nah, none of that. Just a kiss, you know? Yeah. A classic date, a nice date. Yeah. With a friendly co-worker. What, was it all tongue and everything? Oh. All tongue and everything, you know? Oh, yeah. Maybe, you no, could have been know. nervous. I, You know, I don't know. If I were you, I would ask your medical doctor if you're really concerned. How long did the hives last? Were you scratching? I'm, I still got them now. That's why I call you. How many? How long ago was this date? Um, Last night, about like, the date and about like, 12, I got home about like 1230. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I've, I'm going to see the doctor by like 6 o'clock. There you go. Okay, good. There you go. Smart man. Well, I wish you well. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, bye, Micah. Bye. Okay. Um, Gerald is on line number 7. He's 37, and his mom is coming to live with him soon, and he wants to know whether he should set some rules. Yes, Gerald. Yeah, how you doing, Wendy? Yes, Gerald, you cannot have your mother. Now, why is your mother coming to live with you? You're 37. Your mom is how old? Uh, well, she's in her 70s. Okay. Uh, this is the situation. The home that I'm living in, mm -hmm. um, I inherited it from her. She signed it over to me okay. before she left. Mm -hmm. And she told me, listen, when my eyes close, don't be expecting anything else. So this is my home. Okay. But to me, I think as long as my mom's is still living, it's her home. Because, you know, she bought the house. She maintained it till she moved, retired and moved down to Florida. Okay. It's a three-family home. We have the first floor that's going to be vacant in a couple of months. Okay. And she's going to be moving back up. Okay. Now. She's going to have her own apartment. Yeah. But do I... When she comes, I, I haven't lived with my mother since I left for college. Well, you're not exactly living in the same space. You're just living under, in the same building. Right. And um, she gave it to you, so just get in the mental frame that you do own the house. Okay. Now, now your mother is your number one girl. Are you with a girlfriend or wife or anything? No. Okay, so your mom is your number one girl. 
and you treat her as such with respect and dignity and of course always like a lady but I will say to you you know if your mother is one of these types of mothers to you know expect that you're going to come downstairs every Sunday at 2 o'clock right. for dinner yeah. there are little um, rules that you do need to set for parents um, as they get older they, they, they expect an awful lot and they don't understand that your 37 is not like when she was 37 right. Right. every day is a hustle um, out here for us many of us have more jobs than we have time in the day okay so you know when when you have a date she no she's not privy to meet every girl that you bring over when you want her to meet somebody you will call her ahead of time and you all will go down there right right don't okay. ask you about whose car is in the driveway you are a grown man right okay all right thank you Wendy. and and de deliver you got to think of your rules before your mother moves there that way nothing is um, a surprise and you can even say, listen, Mom, you know, I wanted to talk to you. I know you're moving in. I can't wait for you to get there. But he, he, there are a few things that I need, I need you to understand. Right. I am not home every day for 5 o'clock dinner. And, and I am not available once or, or seven times a week to obligate to having dinner with you. Right. You know, I, I will let you know in advance or maybe we can do, you know, dinner, dinner dates or, you know, where I come down. But, see, that's the biggest thing because she's in her 70s. She's by herself. Right. And she's going to want you for company and companionship. Hell no. Okay. Gerald? Yeah. And you don't want to become a mama's boy all over again. All these years you've been out on your own. Exactly. And and who you are up there having sex with, staying for the weekend with, or who's only there for an hour is none of her business. Right. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, Wendy, one more thing. Yes. Uh, I know it's advice hour, but she was talking about the American Music Awards. Yes. And it's something you said during the week, uh, last week, something about Mariah Carey looked like she was wearing, like, stuff under her clothes. girdle at the vibe awards she looked like she was all held in and binded by a you know a okay well last night i saw her performance mm -hmm. and um it, i don't even think she had on panties but she came on when she received her award and said that she said uh look i want to apologize for my performance because they just sewed the dress on me because she had a slit like from under her arms down to her leg. Wow. And no, I mean, seriously, she had no panties on. Wow. Well, you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry I didn't see her perform last night. I was living, I only watched that show to see her, to be honest with you. Okay, well, I say one more thing. She is, as for what I saw on the show last night, because uh -huh. I usually don't watch Mariah Carey perform except for her videos. Mm. And to be honest with you, uh, Wendy, I think she's a lazy jump off. I told you, she fans that hair back, and she doesn't really get down to business in bed. She's, a, I mean, because she doesn't move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's lazy in bed, too, in, in my mind. Yeah. But she's she's a beautiful spirit, and, yeah. and she's very, um, she's 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 like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. But she's a lazy LA. Yeah. She yeah. Is. She yeah. Looks yeah. But anyway, happy holidays. Well, thank you, Gerald. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do I have time for line number one? There's somebody anonymous who's 28 years old who almost got swindled out of $3,000. Who did this? Please don't say family. No, it's not family, Wendy. And let me tell you, I want to put the, I want to put this whole situation on blast because this is happening to a lot of people. Well, 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 let me make a long story short. Okay. Basically, what's going on is that I own apartments. And, of course, I advertise in the newspapers okay. and on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. A gentleman contacted me saying that he's moving from um, from London with his family. He's a doctor. Mm -hmm. His wife's an interior decorator. And that he needs an apartment. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, you know, call me. I need your references or whatever. He never called me. Mm -hmm. All we did was email each other back and forth. So he was like, um, how much is... I asked, I asked him. I said, I need security. And first... So that came up to nineteen hundred. Then he, this is what he did. He was like, "That's fine. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna have my financier who lives in the states send you the money mm -hmm. by cashier's check." Mm -hmm. He was like, "Also, I want to be settled by the time I get in. So I'm also gonna have have you um, have him send the money for the furniture, so that when they deliver my furniture, can you take care of that?" Mm -hmm. Me being, you know, the nice person, I was like, "Fine, no problem." But I was like, "You need to send the security first, so I can take, hold the apartment." Take care of it, as in be there to let them in. Yeah, let them in and also pay them. So he was like, "You the know." The delivery people. The 1900. The, de the delivery people or the whole furniture bill? Like, I, I, the way I understood it to be was that 
he was going to send me all the money, and then when the furniture people come, I'll pay them. Okay. So I was like, for him, to, I was like to myself, like, this is person just trusting me like this or whatever, but I know I'm an honest person. Right. But I was like, before you do anything, you need to send me the um, security so I can hold the apartment, because I said I have people here in the states, I mean, in my state, who's wanted to look at the apartment. Okay, we're going over the break. you got to speed okay. it up just a bit. Okay, I'm sorry. So what happened is that he sends me a check. Well, his financer supposedly sends me a check for $5,200. Okay. So I get the check, but Wendy, when I see it, it was kind of like fishy. Like, I, I don't know, like something. And, t and another thing, tell me why he lives in London. He said his finances are in the States, but the check came in an envelope from Nigeria. So I was like, oh, whoa, mm -hmm. what's going on? So I emailed mm -hmm. him to let him know I got the check. I went and deposited the check in my checking account. Mm -hmm. And then he, the minute I told him I got the check, he was like, oh, please hurry up, hurry up. You have to send the $3,000 to the people in Canada who supposedly was taking care of his furniture. Then all of a sudden, all of this whole month, he never called me. But he finally called me and told me, oh, there's a change. You need to send the money to the assistant of the lady in Canada. Okay, her. so where are we going with this? What I'm going in with this is that the fact is that my bank account was frozen. Come to find out a fraudulent check. This has been going on for years. Wow. And right now, he's even calling me right now. He's calling me right now because he thinks I have the money to wire and wire to him. What I want to do is give him like a fake number and just be like, okay, go get the stuff because he thinks that, you know, because now the police is involved, FBI, everybody. Okay. So I was just like, not only just to ask you like, what do you think I should do? Should I just not even talk to him right now? Or How old I are you? How old are you? Me? I'm 28. Smart enough to have apartment buildings, dopey enough to fall for the rope-a-dope. Leave this situation alone. You should have smelled this coming a mile away. But Wendy, I didn't, I mean... Okay. Just, what was I supposed to do? And the, and you sp you're supposed to rent to people who you can put your finger on True. who are right here. True. So, you know, you know, get with it, landlord woman, boss lady. Because there are swindlers out here all the time. you got to watch them. Keep it here, everybody. Advice Hour continues. It's windy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. wow. <laughs> it's just about that time of year. Time for another pot day. A WBLS party with a purpose. Last year, Fantasia, John Legend, Keith Sweat, and Brian McKnight sold out weeks before the event, causing many to be left in the cold. Don't let that happen to you. This year will be even bigger and better. We'll begin with a full holiday buffet. Then Chuck Chilla gets the party started. Started with your favorite WBLS personalities. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Okay, everybody. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. My name is Bob. This is Champagne. Good boy David Levy rocking you and popping you. And this is Mark Jordan. Then get ready when Jai Heem hits the stage. It's going to be a party, y'all. <laughs> and just added Vivian Green. <laughs> Along with Donnell Jones. Mark your calendar for Saturday night, December 17th. It all goes down to the Broadway Ballroom with the Marriott Marquee Midtown. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. The WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose 2005 is brought to you by our friends at the New York Department of Health, urging all New Yorkers to get their flu shots by logging on to nyc.gov.com to find convenient flu shot locations. It's a party with a purpose. With 107.5 WBLS. Oh, yeah. Get your tickets for that. Don't forget, December 17th. 17th, like they said, at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. Within the Marquis, there's a beautiful space called the Broadway Ballroom, and that is where our party with the purpose is going down. Don't be left out. Get your tickets now. We got the food, the booze, and the entertainment. And everybody's going to be there from the WBLS family. Everybody. 212-307-7171. That's Ticketmaster. 212-307-7171. It's our Christmas party with the purpose, and the purpose this year is to benefit... The anti-domestic violence programs, Safe Horizon, and Day One. Mm, mm, mm. It's still advice hour, and I wanted to get to the phones in just a moment. There is a woman that I see on my computer screen, uh, very interesting. Um, she's on line number six. Not right now, though. She's having mother-in-law problems. Her name is Cat. Hang on a second. Uh, I wanted to talk with you about our friends. Um, Stephanie Cohen and her fabulous husband, Ben. They are the owners of Benjamin Rug and Home Imports, located in Secaucus, New Jersey, 20 Meadowlands Parkway. I'm going to give you the telephone number. I'm going to give you their store hours. And I want you to know that Stephanie and Ben invite you to stop by this weekend for a rug special and an upholstery promotion. Hello. Freshen things up for the holidays around the house. The pink room is looking fabulous. Our furniture is finally in. 
and it was well worth every bit of planning, plotting, and waiting. And we didn't have to wait so long either. It's just that, you know, we've been living out of boxes, so it seems like forever, but it really wasn't a long time. Stephanie came in and oversaw the, the delivery. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, Stephanie will come to your house, too. Listen, listen to what they have. They have the interior design service there at Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. If you're at a loss as to what to do with that particular room or the whole interior of your house or whatnot, call them up. They'll provide the room setting and furniture plans. And did I mention that this is a retail store with wholesale prices? Yes, wholesale. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports in Secaucus, New Jersey. I've shopped there for my home, and now our office, Steve Harvey's office, um, a few of the big chiefs around here, all their offices, all of our offices are rejudged thanks to the fabulous people at Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. We love them. We believe in them, and that's why we pass the information along to you. Wholesale prices. You're not going to break the bank, but you are going to have unique, one-of-a-kind looking stuff going on in your house. They've got two floors, the cas- the classic gallery is upstairs, and then the traditional contemporary gallery is downstairs. And when I say contemporary, I'm talking all the mirrors and the silver and the 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 the, the sleekness and the lines of contemporary. I talk contemporary because that's my favorite. I I love contemporary stuff and they just have just great stuff. Lamps, the tchotchkes that you hang on the wall, the whole bit, just sleek and nice. Something different than what you see over at your friend's house. Store hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, noon to 5 p.m. Make sure that on Friday when you go shopping, you make Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports part of your trek. 201-617-9000. 20 Meadowlands Parkway, Secaucus, New Jersey. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. The web address is simply stephaniecohen.com. Take a look. You see some of the furniture from my office here at the radio station right there on the front page. stephaniecohen.com. 20 Meadowlands Parkway, Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, located in Secaucus, 201-617-9000. Let's get to line number six. Cat's on the phone. Her mother-in-law has moved in with she and her husband, and the mother-in-law listens to them having sex. Cat? Hi. How do you know she listens? Okay. The first week that she moved in with us, mm-hmm. I, um... We were in bed, and obviously, me and my husband, we were making love, and I, I felt like someone was at the door. You know, you get, you get that at feeling that someone's listening, or, at the door. or anyway, I got the feeling, and, and I walked to the door, and I told my husband, I'm going to, I feel like someone's standing there. And okay, I the door, so you guys, were in the, you guys were in the throes of passion. Yeah. Okay, and then you, okay, okay, go. And she was in everything, and something just told me, like, someone's listening, like, there. Right. Felt someone's present. Right, right, right. So I walked to the door, the door and there she is. Wow. And then she acted like she was doing something different, but yet it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. No, she so was... She, she had been doing that. She was know? listening. How old is your husband? He is 38. And and how old is your mother-in-law, approximately? She is about 52 now. 52? 62. 62. Still young enough to long and go yeah. back and, and take care of herself. Yeah. Wow. And then, like, you know, and now every time that we, we have sex, I'm like, I'm wondering if she's listening. Why is your mother, a young woman of 62, living with you and your husband? Well, she she has psychiatric issues, meaning oh. she's always, she has, like, depression oh. a lot, so she's on the medication. And, that's, and, and that, that's why she has to live with you? She can't, you know, live in an apartment down the street or... I mean, she could, but what happened was it was like an emergency situation. She was living with someone else, another family member, mm-hmm. and they basically just kicked her out. Probably you know, because, probably because a lot of the same things. Why did you investigate um, as to why she was being kicked out? Uh, from yeah, the- we did. We did ask questions, and basically it was just that they were saying that she was just sitting around doing that, and that she was causing problems in the marriage. At that household, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as to what kind of problems she was causing. They yeah, but just problems. hearing, just hearing from somebody else, she was causing problems. You guys yeah. should have made other arrangements for her. So now, this yeah. is she's been living with you guys for how long? It's been about two months now. Okay, and and when do you plan on the move out date? When is this date you and your husband have already talked about? 
Well, the date uh, now uh, has changed because we have tenants that live downstairs. Okay. We have two family owned. That's okay. They're, they're going to be moving out, and she, he wants to put her downstairs. Absolutely. Thank God you don't have to fight with your husband over this to cause your yeah. divorce. Yeah. All right, so look, just just put up with it. I mean, until yeah. then, just put up with it. Yeah. I mean, it's just weird. You know, she sits around the house all day, so it's not like you can, you know, have sex when she's out someplace. Right. So just put up with it. Or you guys go out to the garage and have sex. You know, let him throw you over the fender. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I just can't. I don't feel free anymore. You know what I mean? I can't get loose when I'm in the bedroom with him. I have well, to keep quiet. But, but do it every place but the bedroom. Like I said, yeah. go, you know, go down to the, the, the garage. Yeah. Try other locations, right? Uh, absolutely. Okay. You let him throw yes. you over the washing machine? Oh. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Heat you up over the dryer? Oh, yeah. I can't do that. Whatever you do, don't let this old bat drive a wedge between you and your husband. No, I'm, I'm trying not to. I'm so awkward. And it's his mom, so you know how it is. He, he has more right to say something than I do. Yeah, walk easy know? Walk easy with this one, Kat. But just be yeah. happy that, you, that your husband thinks she should move out, too. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Kat. Okay, I love your show. Thank you. I love you, too. Okay, bye. I want to shout out to Kelly, Sora- uh, Soraya, Madison, and Aisha. We've got to continue with this break, you all. You can either hold on if you'd like, or you can hang up, and, and we can talk another time. Um, it's the Wendy Williams Experience, and we're here until 7, the day, the day before Thanksgiving. Here we are. 107.5. You WBLS. Read about it or heard parts of it. It's the interview that had everybody talking. The most rightest thing you ever said. Wendy and Whitney. You smoke weed? Wendy and Whitney. Now, here's your chance to hear it for yourself or enjoy it again. This Thursday, 2 p.m. Experience it for yourself. A Thanksgiving treat from 107.5 WBLS. This portion of programming is brought to you by the MSG Networks. It's Nick's Night on MSG as Steph and the Knicks take on reigning rookie of the year, Ameka Okafor and the Bobcats. Nick's Night tonight at 7, only on MSG. Do Jenny Craig to come find your ass and put you in a fat farm. Thug like Outlaw Westside is Tupac, so you know I said it. Experience, experience, experience. And then come to find out he didn't have the $20,000. He would have had to get it from Shug. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> At the time of death, what? We heard broke, right? Yes, yes. Which is more, you know, drama and tragedy than anything. Forget me. Oh, shoot. The cupcakes are here. My Thanksgiving dinner is shaping up lovely. Let's have one. No. <laughs> she gave me a free one for the road. See? Oh, one for the road, and we'll split it then, Artie. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Um, Hunter Carrington Wellington. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm not mistaken. Did Okay. Well, here, just put just put one bag right here. Let's do the Wendy Williams people poll question. You know, I'm gathering the hors d'oeuvres and dessert from everywhere around town. And fabulous Dominique is helping me out. Now, I have to show you what I'm going to be doing. Um, to serve my dips and to serve my soup, I'm going to be gutting out these beautiful wow. sourdough wow. a sourdough breads, individual. So you gut this out. Now, we, the lentil soup gets d- delivered today at like 4 o'clock. Five, Perfect. Fill it up with lentil soup. Place one at each everybody's plate. Yes. Then during hors d'oeuvre time, you have it gutted out, yeah. and you know you use one like for dips and stuff. It's just a fancy, very easy way of doing things. You doing liver and bacon too? Chicken livers and bacon, yes. Yes. Yeah. We'll eat those right off the pan out of the oven, honey. Oh. Yeah, those don't sit long enough. Ugh. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. How many of those did you get? Ten. Ten. Perfect. Damn. Um, Perfect. But they're, they're kind of pricey. Oh, I didn't give you enough money. Yeah. I thought you said they were eighty-five cents a piece. How much were they? Woo. Did you have enough money? Yeah. I just made it. Oh, she just made it. That means that you had to walk the whole time because I gave you money for a camp uh, or something, too. Yeah. Subway? Oh. Damn, three fifty a piece. Okay. So that means that after the soup is done, break up the bread and sop, sop, sop it up. Yeah, and I, I use my Metro card, Lindsay, so. Okay, so I owe you money? <laughs> Okay. It's Brownsville. No, no that's, it ain't that's Brownsville. Brownsville. It's but... also mommy intern. Yeah. I know she goes through. What do you get? The four year old, right? Yeah. <laughs> $2 back home. All right. Well, then here's only $2, and that's Wayside. Oh. Okay. So you want me to take these back Suburbs there? can play that, too. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, no, you can leave them in here. Just take them off the floor, though. Yeah, we'll get mice. 
<laughs> among other things around here. <laughs> the Wendy Williams, thank you, Dominique. The Wendy Williams people poll question is, have you ever gotten an HIV test? That was from yesterday. 40% of you all said yes. 60% of you said no. You've never gotten one. The question is, what percentage of this audience is sexually active? Because if it's 60% of the audience, then I understand. But if you are sexually active and you haven't, I don't care if you're married. So what? Somebody's always creeping and creeping, cheating and doing something. You need to get one. Today's question, and I'll answer it um, on Monday, actually, because we have off um, Thursday and Friday. Do you visit the dentist at least once a year? At least once a year. That sounds like one that we've done before, but we haven't. It's just that we talk about teeth a lot here on the show. Um, keep it here, too. Coming up at the top of the hour, Remy Martin is coming in. Um, she and I are going to be out in Roselle, New Jersey tonight. Shout out to everybody there at the Palooza Club. Remy's performing and I'm hosting. And um, that's that way I get out of my kitchen responsibilities with my mother. Because I'll come home, you know, all my food will be ready. All I have to do is wrap the chicken livers in bacon and wrap the scallops in bacon. I can do that tomorrow morning. Uh, bacon makes everything taste better. I mean, no matter what it is, Brussels sprouts with bacon, that tastes good too. <clears throat> Anyway, okay. So I told you I was going to give you some tips this advice hour um, regarding Thanksgiving if you are the host and tips if you are the guest. I got these tips off the web, but I concur with um, most of them. So if you're the host, plan to provide a traditional Thanksgiving feast, then create, you know, interest with sides, you know, like whether if you want to have like mashed peas or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um... Also, one thing, don't forget the vegetarians this Thanksgiving. Thank you. Get one of those tofuties. Um, my colon um, therapist told me that they're like 25 bucks. They're in the shape of a turkey. And I'm sure they're nasty as hell. But hell, you, you know, they chose to be vegetarians, so throw that nasty slop up there, too. And look, you can still, as far as I'm concerned, you can still cook in fat back and and ham hock. Just sift that part out and, you know, let the vegetarians, you know, no. suck on that pig bone. No. Mm -hmm. It also says if you're the host, whenever anyone offers to help bring dishes, say, yes, thank you. Take the help. Number three, use hollowed out loaves for charming serving containers like cheese, dips, olives, chips, and small sandwiches and soup. I say this is on the list. It just so happens I just got my, my bread. Number four, once the table setting and centerpieces are in place, sit in each chair to make sure each guest is going to feel comfortable. Whatever. Mm. Number five, include favorite kids' foods, especially those who can eat neatly with their fingers. Yeah, chicken fingers. Number six, provide at least one low-calorie and one vegetarian option then serve, serve the sinful desserts. Number seven, completely clear the table of all dishes from previous courses before serving dessert. Number eight, if you're the host, fill the sink with soapy water so culinary and small dishes can soak and clean as the guests are finishing. Here's another one. Make it easy for guests who help you clean up by placing your recycling bin labels on the containers, glass, cans, trash. And here's the last one for your, you, the host. Keep club soda nearby to clean out spots and stains. Don't forget that. And if you're the guest, <clears throat> here's what you do for Thanksgiving. Arrive no earlier than the time that the host announces and no later than a half hour after that time. If you are the guest tomorrow, plan to stay about a an hour after dinner, unless travel plans or sleepy children necessitate leaving early. In other words, get the hint and get the hell out. With the exception of our guests, who everybody's sleeping over. So, and I'll just leave them there talking at the table as I get dressed to go out to the um, Laugh Factory. Because the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience is actually going to be tomorrow night at the Laugh Factory. The jokes start at 9 o'clock. <clears throat> And if you're the guest, bring a gift and write a note within a week afterwards. Bring a holiday gift for the house, a little token of something. And here's another one. If you're the guest, offer to help set the table and to clean up afterwards. If you're the guest, hold on, I have two more. If you're the guest, notify the host of any special dietary needs, vegetarian, diabetic, allergic, 
you know what? I don't know who wrote this. Don't bother anybody with your mess. If you are the guest, the host has been planning this meal for the last two weeks or more. Notify no one of nothing. If you're the guest and you're a diabetic, make sure that you have what you need in your pockets. If there's certain things that you can't eat, there's so much food at Thanksgiving. Skip over this to eat that and so on and so forth. Don't notify anybody. If you're the guest, understand that this is not a last minute meal. If you're the guest, keep your problems to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> And lastly, if you're going to a potluck Thanksgiving, bring a serving dish, bring a serving dish with your contribution. And um, as opposed to bringing it, you know, like in Tupperware, and then you have to say, do you have a glass bowl to put this in? It looks best in a glass bowl so people can see the, the pretty colors off the side. No, you bring the glass damn bowl. Stop putting people out. The guest doesn't mean the same thing that it used to mean back in the day. You know what I mean? Back in the day when the host would clear the table. and No, the guest means keep your problems to yourself and take your own plate off the table, rinse it and put it in the dishwasher and make sure that my silverware doesn't go down the garbage disposal with everything. Yes. And the guest means if you want to refill, there's the water container right over there. Unless you're older than 65, in which case you sit down and complain because you're good at that. And I'll do everything if you're the guest. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. I mean, advice hour is done. Wendy, man. Oh, Hello. what's going on, Remy? What happened with you and Gloria Velez? Talking mad reckless to me. FYI, I never got robbed in my life. Okay. You let a Gloria Velez rob me. The Wendy Williams Experience. Log on to WBLS.com and sign up for the e-newsletter for your chance to pick up a copy of Stealth with Jamie Foxx, Jessica Biel, and Josh Lucas. Now on two-disc DVD or PSP. Rated P. 107.5 WBLS. Your listeners know from time to time we have special guests here in the studio. Y'all, what's up? This is Charlie Wilson. This is A. Marie. What's up? What's up? This is Eric Benet. What's up? This is Shanice. Yo, what's up? This your boy MH Marcus Houston, and you're listening to my girl, the beautiful Miss Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. I'll at your boy. Yo, this is Flavor Flay. Yo, what up? What up, y'all? This is Lil C's representing Junior Mafia to the fullest. Yo, what's up? It's Talib Kweli in the place to be BKMC. You checking out the Wendy Williams Experience right now. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy. Wendy Williams. Okay, everybody, it's the bonus hour, and uh, Jen is here. Hello. Remy's on her way. Hey, J Jen, first and foremost, you must visit as an ex-intern of the show. Can you please clear off the seat for our <laughs> guests? <laughs> that would be you. Here. Yeah. Yeah, just put your bag down. You remember the rules. Nobody's stealing. I know. You know, just clear everything off. Hey, Arnie, either Jen has lost a bunch of weight since be, uh, originally the Ultimate Hustler, or, you know, TV just adds the weight, Jen. I've heard. Your friends were like, wow, Jen. Oh. And people from high school, I'm getting phone calls like, oh, look a little heavy on TV. I'm like, and how dare them? But let's just be honest and look at her face. Your, your skin doesn't look like Edward James almost in person. <laughs> I swear on the, did anybody say that to you? No. Oh, they probably didn't have the, the guts. Damn me. Yeah. Damn me. But it wasn't, I mean. Did you see any of the um, takes? No. Because I never, I was like, Jen was not thick with bad skin. She's a girl from Staten Island with a lapse of apso. <laughs> and you were never forgetful here on the show. Like, when you lost your chain, I wanted to crack your skull. It was out of... I, I don't know what happened to me. Oh, like okay, l l let's just rewind. <laughs> Jen... Jen, what's your last name again? Bayer. Jen Bayer is here, everybody. And she was an intern here for the Wendy Williams Experience long before the ultimate hustler came along. And even after her internship was over, she would, you know, our interns, you know, they come back and say, hey, how you doing? She has laps of apps. So remember when I got the dog, I couldn't handle it. Uh, Artie, now, um, I sold it to Art. <laughs> Jen, I it just couldn't take Wilson. No. But okay, so now Jen, if you're confused, was the white girl on the Ultimate Hustler. The only white girl. 
who we were mad at. You lost your chain. We right. all thought that you would have been fired. I was surprised that he I hadn't fired you. Fine. Let's talk about your experience. It was amazing. You got fired last night. You got yes, kicked off last night. I got kicked off last night. I was watching the American Music Awards. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. What I, happened? I figured a lot of people would be. But we'll see it this weekend. In yes, re- in repeats, yes. In repeats. Repeats um, this Saturday, starting at 11 a.m. Yeah. There's all seven episodes, back to back. By the way, your nails look nice today. They always look nice during the show, too. Thank you. And, oh, I didn't think. I, I mean, they were grown out three weeks wow. on the show. First said, of all, oh the God. living conditions. Go ahead, because we can talk now. Uh, they, it was hot. It was very, very hot. I mean, out of the only complaint I had was the heat. But you got used to it. Yeah. It was like, okay, it's hot, and it's going to stay hot. Right. So if you're not cute on TV, you're not cute on TV. Right. You're not here to be cute. Right. We're here to win. Right. Um, living, you know, all the girls, we, we shared one room. Uh-huh. It was cool. I, I mean, nobody got in my way. Uh-huh. I don't think I was in anyone's way. So that wasn't that wasn't so bad. Yeah. But the boys had a separate bathroom. We had a separate bathroom. I mean, at times, the girls, you know, we'd have a problem with the bathroom. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it was And how is Dame? Simple. How is Dame? <gasps> Let's talk. I think Dame is great. Okay. Before going on the show, I said, I was scared to death. Mm. Because you see the videos and you hear the stories about how he's he's hard to deal with. He, he can yell and he yeah. can be mean. And surprisingly, he didn't yell once at us. He wasn't nasty. I mean, he made jokes and he tried to make people feel stupid or corny, whatever. Uh-huh. But at the end of the day, I think... He really, really is a, is a good man. Okay. I think he's loyal to the people that work around mm-hmm. him. And I think he has a lot, lot to teach someone like myself. Yeah. yeah. So now, why did you... Uh-huh. Wendy, it's on Elisa. The, on the show before the last Get one. Get mic. They were mad. The other girl got kicked off. They were, it was going to be between Jen and the other uh, girl. Okay. And she got mad. She said that Dame favored Jen because she was white. Well, let's talk about this. Uh, because even though you got kicked off last night, have you already gotten the phone call to go back and do something? Not yet. I'm hoping. I've been in contact with his ex-assistant Jasmine, so I'm praying that I get the phone call for the personal assistant job okay. with him. I okay. would love it. Is he looking for personal assistant? Last I heard, he was. Now, do you think that you can go to this interview with knee pads? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? I know you do. I don't. I don't think. Oh, don't, I don't don't say another word. Let me talk with Art. Now you don't don't say another <laughs> word. Hey, Taryn. Taryn's here too. But, um, Art. Yes. You know and I know. Yeah. That hesitation right there mm-hmm. says yeah. knee pads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. And what else do you bring? And flavor lotion that gets warm. There you go. There you no. Go. Yes. <laughs> don't say anything, Jen. I understand. Um, yeah, I was going to ask about his wife. Uh, Rachel was, she, Let's she gave talk us a about lot of input. Okay. I mean, she's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, yes. Oh, you feel, I mean, I feel like a pretty girl. You stand next to her and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't feel pretty anymore. If Dane wanted you to get with Rachel for the assistance job, would, would you do that? Don't yeah. say a word. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> that hesitation is killing me. Okay. Just don't say anything because. You, you know what I'm saying, Goose. <laughs> if Jen can't answer right away and you see her body language, she's looking up in the sky, <laughs> and then she licked her top lip, and she lifted her behind off the chair with her arm. Wow. Jen is thinking innocently. No. <laughs> her mind is Jen innocent. is a girl about to get ahead in this game. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, what other questions to ask her about the show? I mean, I I, I got to tell you, I was in and out of the, the show. the interaction was between Dame and the wife? Uh, okay, what's the interaction um, between Dame? Wait a minute. Elisa, were you really caught up in the show? I just watched because of Jen. <laughs> no offense, BT. I just watched for Jen. Okay. Um, there... I mean, the only time we really saw them together uh-huh. was when we did the, the dinners, when somebody would get um, sent home. Uh-huh. So it was... They really... There would not, not be a lot of interaction between them because it would either... He would just speak to us about what went on the day, and she'd put an input here and there, and he always commented, this is my lovely wife, Rachel Roy, yeah. but that was all we really saw of yeah. him. I mean, I, I saw him, him with his... No. I saw him with his daughter one day when we did go up to Rockaway, mm-hmm. the first episode, and she he absolutely adores her. Okay. She was hugging him and kissing him, and... No, was he, he a, was he like, get off me, you kid, or was he kissing no, and hugging no, back? No, 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 Kissing and hugging back. Yeah. You know, saw pictures in his office of the whole family together. Rachel was like in the pictures, lo- too? Yes, they look like a very loving family. 
I got to tell you something. This Jen is playing it politically correct. She would do <laughs> Rachel. She would do Dame. Would you do them together? I might. See? No. <laughs> and she's saying all the right things. Did you know that uh, we had cameras in the old pink room? Do you want to tell me something? What are you talking about? <laughs> Why'd you pass me this note? I didn't pass it. Art passed it. <laughs> Art. Oh, <laughs> Art has you caught on film doing something with him. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. My behind. I just guessed it. But look at his body language. Wow. <laughs> Jen, have you ever been with Miss Artie? I don't know anything about Art. <laughs> Girls! Girls, are you looking at the body language? No, no, no! You're red. Look no. at Art. Art, you're go, go, go get the Art, table. You're on red. Top. Go get the table on the uh, black cabinet. Whatever. Mm. Whatever. Art, Jen, did you have sex with Art? No. No. Why are you looking away from her? Oh, everything is crazy right now. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Artie, just let me know because I'm getting that. I'm getting that couch. Uh, the couch is gone anyway. <laughs> No. Yeah, Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, oh, they yeah. gave me a brand new couch yeah. with no funky spunk on it. True, true. So it's safe to say that Jen and Art have had sex before. No. <laughs> it, uh, that might taint you with the Dash experience. Oh, it might help her. No, you're part of this camp. Dane doesn't want her. As a matter of fact, did he know that you were my intern? Yes, he did. Well, what did he say? Um, Just really that he didn't rock with you. No, like we don't. That, we that don't, was it. But okay. Just, just nothing it. funky? No, just that they didn't all rock with you because of something that you said about his son. Whatever, I'm not the one who placed the ism. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and I'm not the, the New York Post saying that your son's up in a club with big-breasted women. Easy. And, you know, at an adult club after hours when he needs to be home and in the bed. If that's how you spend your father son time, fine. I'm not. I'm busy. I got work outside of this work and life outside of this life. I'm not tracking you down, Dane. If it's in the newspaper and I talk about it, so you rock with them. Why? Because they're white. Ooh. But you don't rock with me. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Right. There is mutual respect for his hustle and all like that. But the reason that he rocks with me, what you just said, that has nothing to do with me. That has to do with me regurgitating what the hell is going on in newspapers. According to your son's school and his school teacher oh, and easy. the club owners and the patrons at the clubs oh. and your baby's mother. Oh, no. No. You shut up, Art. <laughs> I'm looking out for Jen. <laughs> I don't want her to You're get not looking out for Jen. Spreading lies over You already had her. What do you care? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, she makes love like Mariah Carey. Oh, she does? <laughs> you're a, you're a cold <laughs> fish? <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, my God! Because I peg Mariah for being a cold fish. She just fans her hair out and, like, do me. I thought beautiful. that was Beyonce. Both of them. <laughs> Both of them. And Halle Berry, too, as long as we're talking. The three of those nutty fruit cakes. <laughs> now, now not, not one of the three can really put it down. And now Jen. And now Jen. Oh. Well, TP is going to fall off the line. Take some lessons because, um, no, no. Uh, you know what? I wish you well. Thank um, you. I, I think that you put yourself... I think that this went pretty well, and you put yourself in a good position. Now, when you when you looked in the camera last night after they kicked you off, because that other the white boy that was on there, uh -huh. he, was, he was smooth with his. Did you see that one? Smooth as hell. He got kicked off the show. He walked he, off he, whatever he did. He walked off. He but said he, he wasn't. He, he did a off. in the camera. I loved his FaceTime in the camera. He gave it like yeah. a corporate dude. Mm -hmm. I'm sad. Last night I didn't get a lot of FaceTime last night, and that's the only thing I'm sad did about. Did you cry? Did I cry when right. I was? Li I ha I did cry once on the show. Okay. Oh, um, last night it was I was a little choked up, but there were there were no tears flying or anything like that. Were you allowed to keep the hustler chain? Yes. Yes, did I you? have mine at home. Why didn't you bring it? Yeah. Oh, 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 making a scrapbook for me, so it's going in my ultimate hustler scrapbook. Oh As a God. memory. Oh, my God. Come on, Come on <laughs> Exactly. You are so 12. You are so teen people. <laughs> okay. A scrapbook. <laughs> what? I don't understand. <clears throat> what? You scrapbook and all that. It's the Wendy Williams experience, man. <laughs> what? Did you make a scrapbook from being on this show? I had no picture. 
of being on this show. So I don't know. I see my sister's putting it together for me. Whatever. You got to use condoms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's already life for the party, oh. funky spunk, you know? I, I, I want everyone to know that December 13th is our live season finale. Oh, okay. And we'll get to see who oh, becomes the ultimate hustler. And Saturday, back to back, November 26th, seven episodes of the ultimate hustler. Look out for Jen the Pen. You can email me at Jen the Pen, T H A. Is that what they call you? Jen the Pen? Yes. Jen the Pen. Who gave you that name? Damon did. Oh. I was the only one who got a nickname. I called you White Girl Jen. You could have <laughs> used that name. No, we didn't have a name for you here. We just called you Jen. Just Jen. 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 I think that, that it was really good that you were on that show, though, yeah, Jen. Yeah, I think it... I think it and I think and I think you stuck out a lot and and um, in an industry where it's dog eat dog, I think that being on that show was good for you and getting kicked off wasn't the worst thing in the world. No, I'm I'm glad I I stood. Ten people had to go home before me. I'm and, not mad at that. And thank God you lost the pendant for a moment and you stayed. I bet you learned a lesson and a half. Yes. Yeah. I have. I I was really the, learned a lot. Was the chain it. real? The ch no, the chain wasn't. It wasn't real. What? But the winner wins a real chain. So. And what one of those cars that you were driving around in? Those were the Jeep Commanders, uh -huh. and whoever wins also gets a Jeep Commander. Mm. And a job with Damon. Was there anybody smoking weed on that show? Oh. No one smoking weed. A lot of Armadale popping. Armadale um, happens to be a big sponsor of this year's Don's and Divas Extravaganza. Really? So shout out to you, Dane. Somewhere in there, I imagine that in a weird kind of way, we both understand each other's hustles. It's just that we don't cross uh, paths all the time, which is, you know, fine with me. And, um, all right, so please repeat. Wait, hold on, Goose. Hold on, Goose. I think that this is this is lining you up to maybe do something with the Rocco, um, what do you call the, well, the Dame name. Dash Camp? Yes. Promote, promote, promote. Well, Say it again. Saturday is the Get Money Marathon. Seven episodes back to back. Okay. Of all the Ultimate Hustler. What time do they start? Eastern they start time? at 11 a.m. Okay. And okay. run for, you know, every episode's an hour. Okay. So seven hours for the day. Okay. And December 13th, again, is our live season finale. Okay. And we'll see who gets named the Ultimate Hustler. And okay. look out for me because we all get to come back for that, which will be great. Can I'm you please excited. remind us of December 13th so of that we course. can yes, all, yes, yes, you yes, know, yes. I'm praying that Deshaun or someone, you know, who, who knows who's going to win, but... I have my eye on Deshaun. Was you know anybody, Deshaun from Real Hip Hop? Yes, I, I do. do. Never was, know. Was there anybody having sex on the show? Uh, there was a little, there was, a, I don't know if it was sex, but there was a, two people laid yeah. up together, yeah. Who? Ashley and Ray. They're both from Atlanta. That doesn't mean anything to me. Does that mean anything to you, uh, Elisa? I know who they are. Was there any e-pill popping? No. Cocaine sniffing? No. Gorilla smoking? No. Mm -hmm. Just some Armadale. That was yeah, it. drinking. Mm -hmm. Just drinking. On BT. It's on oh, BET. On BET? Yeah. Yes. We know. Mm -hmm. The ultimate hustler. Okay, I think we're um, we're finished. Yeah. Now, do you, you. do you want to help out with the remainder of the show? I'd love to. I'd love okay. To. I'd love to. I'd love well, then to can you get around. the Can you get the faxes? I can get the faxes. Okay. <laughs> Give me a fork and some salt. Uh, yeah. yeah, it already needs a fork and salt. His lunch is ready. <laughs> Thank Jen, you for having me. Jen, you did very well, though, Thank on the you. show. Thank Are you really going to stick around tonight? Or yeah, are you gonna I'll go hang home? out. No, I'll hang out. All right, good. I mean, Mom's at home cooking. She we're probably proud. wants help, but I'm not much of a chef. Yeah, we have a new, we have a new we're pink office, of, too. Um, we're proud of Jen. She's the one of our favorites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, Jen, you really were. When you were here, you were a really good thank intern. You. Thank you, thank you. Helpful, thank you. courteous, and efficient, which is why my heart was broken. When what, I lost the yeah, chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mine the only reason why Art didn't, you're not one of Art's favorites, because he didn't sleep with you. But I just want everyone to know that, again, no, yes, I know me. my Artie. Yes, he did. At JenPen at AOL.com. Art, Art just manages to get it in. Easy. <laughs> Trust and believe. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, wait, go ahead, Jen. What's the email? JenThePen at AOL.com. Uh -huh. It's not T-H-E, it's T-H-A. Um, also, you could find me at Platinum. Look at her speaking. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you just put Duh, D-A, oh. Jen Pen? The um, I'm actually Go, working what? for a concierge service oh, right now. Good. Visit www.mo.com. It's called Members Only. Yeah. It, uh, it's for professional athletes and entertainers, mm -hmm. all upscale people. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't be opposed to putting a little something extra in your work duties, if you know what I'm saying. Oh. Right? Not at all. Okay. Oh. I appreciate the honesty. Look, she's single. She lives on Staten Island. Yes. She's no cute. Children. She's got no children. No strings attached. No strings attached. No man worth nope. anything. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Jen, stick with the formula. 
Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, Jen, and she's available to be your personal assistant <laughs> for the right dollar. JenThePenAOL.com. The there you go. <laughs> JenThePenAOL.com. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. The art needs that salt and that fork. Okay, I got and it. I just need my faxes. And don't separate the ones that talk about you. I want to talk about them. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jen. Don't forget to take your coat. We have another guest coming okay. in in a few moments. Remy Martin, she'll fight you. <laughs> okay. It's Jen. Arthur? You've done it again. Oh, yes. I can't believe you had the nerve to mention it. Yes. Well, we keep it real on this show. No, I know. Me and Art keep it real behind the scenes. and But I'm surprised you brought it to the show. Oh, well. Have you been drinking? Um, no, but I will start soon. Yeah, that was that was a good touch, though. I can't believe it. I'm sure she couldn't believe it either. She couldn't control her body language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exposed. All right. Keep it here, everybody. We gossip. We're still waiting for Remy Martin. And Thanksgiving is tomorrow. How you doing? Wendy, man. You had a caller call in once and ask, how do you not get crack lip when you chief in? Yes. Tell them to roll a filter up in their stuff and they'll be all right. Mm, wow. Thank you. Wow. you welcome. I mean, they thank you. The Wendy Williams Experience. Thank you. Don't tell me I won. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, my God. It ain't over yet. The winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. Okay, repeat that for me. <laughs> Listen to what the winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e-newsletter at WBLS.com. Then listen to win Thursday, December 1st, beginning at 6 a.m. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. The one and only WBLS. Oh, yeah. The hors d'oeuvres and the desserts are just arriving one by one for Thanksgiving dinner. You stay out of everything, okay? Shawnee's here from Shawnee Cater. Hey, Shawnee, what's your uh, web address again? Cater by Shawnee. Cater, Catered by Shawnee's just bought the... Uh, I. I hate to use this um, term, but it's it's like edible crack. It is. it is the bomb. I don't know what you make it out of. I just know that there's oysters in there, and my mouth is watering as I'm talking about it. Our guests are just going to die when they taste this um, delicious pate dip thing. And I bought tons and tons of Cars water crackers. Oh, I don't because you know I don't like anything to interrupt you know the flavor of the crack. Do you know what I mean? But how'd you guess the oysters? You're the only person in five years. Yes, well, because I love to open oysters. Like, I'm, I, I love oysters. I love oysters. So I know the oysters in there. I don't dare try to make it myself. Only you make it that way. I can't wait until my Aunt Marilyn tasted. She's going to... Aunt Marilyn, boy, do I have something special for you. <laughs> and then you have the, um, the chicken and waffles. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. The chicken and waffles. And Shawnee makes it um, like appetizer style right. um, with the little tiny waffle. And you put the chicken. <clears throat> the hors d'oeuvres are covered. <laughs> we didn't get the fried turkey, but the hors d'oeuvres are covered. And can you please not drink directly out of the bottle, backwash? <laughs> you guys enjoy. Thank you so much, Shawnee. No problem. So we're talking about Dons and Divas. And Divas. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's catering Dons and Divas. Yes. yes. Where is that going to be? Up in the up in the VIP? Like like all what? Over. Are you, all over. All over. Floating hors d'oeuvres. Five hours open bar and floating Shawnee stuff. Very yes. sexy hors d'oeuvres, and I have something called the Wendy just for everybody. Wow, the Wendy. Yeah, the Wendy. Get your tickets now. Yeah, it's going to be the monster. Better hurry up and get those tickets. Caterbyshawnee.com. Caterbyshawnee.com. Tell the celebs who you've cooked for and stuff. You know, who you've... I'm sorry. I've cooked for um, Chris Rock's wife. Uh -huh. Malak. Malak Rock. I've done um, Dwayne Wade. Wade just recently. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton. Bill Cosby's had my food. I've done the Eston Showhouse. Yeah. Susan Taylor. Yeah. Um, that's enough. I've done a lot of that's people. enough. And now, with, since no, I've gotten to know you, of course I have you now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, this we is love doing really well, and I thank you so much for everything you've done for me. We love your food. We love your food. I'm so glad you do. Yeah. Well, thank you, Shawnee. Brownsville loves our food, too. Yeah, Brownsville Day. Oh, yeah, you cooked a Brownsville Day. You had a whole little thing going on out there. Thank you. Okay, what would you have on ideas for that? Okay. Happy holidays to you. Oh, you too, okay. Shawnee. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.
She leaned in like she wanted to kiss or something like that. But then she sees I'm sipping out of my champagne bottle. I got the whole slob effect. I've got dots mixed in my teeth, hair in my mouth. Really? Yeah, she leaned in to kiss me and then decided, uh, F that. <laughs> slob. You like Vikings. Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You're alcoholics. Shout out to Kino. I'll see you at Eugene's on Friday night. It's a whole it's a whole extravaganza going on in these next few days. There's so much happening and all through it. Look for the, the, Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> People think this is You're really how we live at our house. You're allowed to celebrate. Just to be alive is enough. Can't be alive to, and healthy. Can't wait to boogie with DJ Quad tonight, Jersey Club music. Yeah, shout out to everybody in Roselle. The Palooza Club is the place to be. Remy Martin is going to be performing. Oh, here she comes. Oh, wait, no, that's Jen from the um, Ultimate Hustler. Um, Remy Martin's going to be performing. I'm going to be hosting the Palooza Club tonight in Roselle, New Jersey. And then tomorrow night, don't forget the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience is moved to Thursday night. That's tomorrow night, Thanksgiving night. Happy what time? they call it. Uh, yeah, shout out to my girl Carlin's Cut Up in Linden, New Jersey. Ask her about tickets for tonight. Or just walk up to the door at the Palooza Club and, excuse me, and, um... Shout out the race. Yeah. Listen, Art, what time do the jokes start? Because you're the first one on stage tomorrow night. What time do the jokes start? Are you going to actually be there? No. I, I, I told you. You're going to Miami yeah, for um, but, but, Fabulous. No, tomorrow night is, um, you know, the club, and tonight is the, uh, the, um, the audition. The auditions right. at the Laugh Factory for the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show. All it's, the freaks come out at night. Oh. From 6 to 8. But tomorrow, I'm trying to figure out what time, Art, what time do the jokes start tomorrow, tomorrow night with Capone and them? <laughs> At S- same time as usual. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine, Nine o'clock. o'clock. Okay. Yes. Stop it. <laughs> Drinking out the bottle like a sailor. Ooh. That's how I married your ass. Ooh. Ooh. God damn. <laughs> I'm real sad. Y'all can see when you're there, bro. I don't know when you're at home. Just drink like me. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> we swing out of the bottles at home, orange some juice. Some and divas too, swinging out the bottle, no glasses. Now, swing out the bottle there too. No lipstick. No panties. Oh, okay. Whoa. TMI. <laughs> Being Wendy Williams, Hunter Wellington. Carrington. Mm, mm. Being Wendy Williams, Hunter Wellington, Carrington. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mess at our house. Um, look, okay. Okay, we gotta give her a ticket. Mm-hmm. I got tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Who wants to win? All right, let me just tease you with it first. Shout out to Canada Face Down. And shout out to Question Mark Entertainment and Face Down Entertainment. Come on, stop. Shout out to Brian Love. Oh, come on. <laughs> Still love you, man. Whatever. December 22nd, the place to be is, I can't say. But it is going to be grown and sexy, just like the previous Dons and Divas. This is our sixth time doing it. It's the Dons and Divas Extravaganza, Question Mark Entertainment, Face Down Production, present the Wendy Williams Experience, Dons and Divas Extravaganza. The, the place la- is going to be called Wendy's Fun House. Wendy's Fun House. There's going to be all kind of, um, are some of the girls going to be walking around topless? Yeah, and the boys. <laughs> Great. All right, so look, this is obviously a grown and sexy party. It's going to be very sophisticated. All kind of crap going on. Five not hours of open party. Huh? Like grown and sexy. People think old fogey is not old fogey. <laughs> I recognize. 25 to 45. Excuse me? That's the demo. 50. 55. No, no, no. no. Have, have you seen Cher? Funky grandma. It's okay. If you're a funky grandma, come on out. But it's really for the young, vigorously 25 to 45, upperly mobile. You know, I don't get in here too often, so I got to give him a shove too. <laughs> he, said, he said, I don't get in here too often. I got to give him a shove too. <laughs> Shout out to the block. Shout out to PPG. All right, so look. 
Um, black is the attire, and um, I want to shout out to Demetrio Furs and Armadale Dame. Thank you so much, you know, for um, helping to sponsor this party. Um, shout out to Ben and Eddie at B and B Jewelers in Wayne, New Jersey. Special shout out to Courtesy Lincoln Mercury in the Bronx, the Federico family. Special shout out to my girl Helen at Seagrams. Thank you, Helen. We've got so many sponsors on board. It's just wonderful this Gilliard year. Gilliard Manufacturers is coming on as a title sponsor, also. Who? Gilliard. Gil- she got Gilliard. Okay. Colden. Gilliard. Clothing. doing the VIP room. Okay. Five hours open bar for the entire party. I'm going to just say ahead of time, drink responsibly. And I and I wanted to go to... Don't be like us. I, I wanted to go to um, the telephone <clears throat> and see if we can find a winner. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hi. Look, pardon whatever behavior you're hearing on the radio. Sound effects. Well, actually, I have my radio turned down because I know how you always tell people to turn down your radio. Thank God. Okay, so what's your name? Nisha. And what do you do for yourself, Nisha? Well, I work in merchandising. I'm a planner for Lomans. Oh, what does that mean? I like Lomans a lot. What do you do there? Planners, they kind of work more on the analytical side instead of um, being a buyer. You work with them. I shop at the Lomans in Wayne, New Jersey. Oh, I, yeah? I'll, I go there at least once every three weeks. Get out. You right I've after- never been to that one, but yeah, we have a few in Jersey. Yeah. No, I love Lomans. Okay, how old are you? 29. Now, do you have children? I have one son. He is nine and a half months old. A brand new son? Yep. Hey, wow, look at you. How's your weight? Did you snap back? Well, I'm pretty much the same. I can fit in about a good 70% of my old pre-baby. Look at you. And plus, for the Dons and Divas, it's black, so you'll look even thinner. Like, you know, you put the black on. Absolutely. So now, um, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a husband? I have a a lesbian. Oh, a fiancé. Nice. And so when are you actually getting married? We don't know yet. We're actually, and this is funny that I'm talking to you now about Uh this, because I know how you're not really into the whole big to-do ceremony Absolutely and not. we're, like, trying to decide if we just want to go to City Hall and just do it. Well, you already have the baby, but you're still yeah. 29, so I understand the wonderment of someone wanting to have something big. Is this a but second you know marriage? What? I've never personally, you know, like, I'm not a person that wants to have, like, a huge wedding with a bunch of people I, I hardly ever see anyway. Yeah. Then don't waste the money. You see... Part of being 29 and getting married is that you're old enough. You See, you're young enough to still have the wonderment in your eye and want to do it, but you're old enough to understand that most of the people at the wedding won't be in your life or don't wish you the best. Or, exactly. you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. And then you've exactly. lived on your own. You have all your toasters and your bedding. And what do you, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. I mean, I listen to you every day. This is so crazy. I know you hear this all the time. Listen to you while I'm at work, and you have me dying. Well, now they're like, "What is she laughing about?" Well, so well, Nisha, I appreciate you listening, and I'm going to give you these passes for the Dons and Davis extravaganza. Thank you so much. And, and I'm glad that you listen every day, and I'm every glad day. that you are a woman doing things for yourself. Yes, I am. And um, congratulations on the baby and the snapback and all like that. <laughs> and that now, are you drinking, a woman? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, you. I mean, you enjoy a casual sip. Absolutely. Good. Well, then, nothing wrong with it at all. In five hours at open bar, you can really pace yourself and that, and, and still, that is great. Yeah, get a minor twist out without <laughs> you know going overboard. Exactly. Right before the holidays. Okay. So <laughs> hang on for a second. We're gonna put you on hold. Okay. Um, Jen. Jen. <laughs> Jen is still here from the Ultimate Hustler. I need you to fill out Nisha's contest sheet. Okay. Just take it to the other I room and fill it. that out. It out. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Jen's about to get home. All right. Goose Tam. Uh, cheers, everybody. It's Wendy bringing a show on Earth. Wendy Williams Experience. Oh. Oh, bring Remy in. She is in here late, and therefore, an affiliate. Shout out to you, and I'm sorry. But we will be going over time just a little bit because Remy Martin is officially in the building. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, I'm trying to... Let's look at that. Yeah, you know what that is? Oh, wow, you look, you look fantastic. Thank you. Look. you lost weight. Mm-hmm. You are doing TV today, so your, your skin is like beat to the flawlessness. Thank you. And you got on a cute winter hat and some... Very cute, look at you. 
Everything I look very colorful. I was thinking rainbow black. Yeah, look, what are you doing? Um, holiday shop. What is it? What's all the deal? Oh. Well, I was just was telling. I was like, I got this shit, but I only give it to you. Promise not to make jokes. I'm not gonna make jokes. Thanksgiving. Oh, no, this is perfect. I can. Remy bought me something for the appetizers for tomorrow. Do you don't mind if I don't open this until tomorrow, right? Thank you, Remy. It's one of those, um, it's one, oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, I'm not opening it until tomorrow. It's one of those edible arrangements with all the fruit. Perfect. Now, this is Thanksgiving tomorrow. My Marilyn is going to be so impressed. Oh, Marilyn, She's I like, no, no. We love those. Thank you. Okay, They're right? perfect. See, that's all my hors d'oeuvres and everything lined up. Oh, Are you cooking tomorrow? How's your son? Um, He's actually on his way up now. I just um, booked him a flight. They're going to come in the morning. Where was he? Where well, is he? He, um, he was, li- well, he lived with me his whole life. Right. But in August, he uh, turned five. Okay. So I had to send him to school. But oh, gotcha. I'm on tour and I'm doing so much stuff that I can't be here. And I don't have anybody that... I actually trust that's going to be able to do it. Gotcha. Be gone. So my mom lives in North Carolina. Gotcha. I sent them down to my mom yeah. like every weekend. Like mm-hmm. I get to go down there or he gets to come up here. Mm-hmm. I think so he's going to come for the um, holidays. Am I cooking? No. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Go out to a restaurant, eat? What do you perform? No, well, my grandmother lives in the Bronx. Let's okay. Let's get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going yeah, to go her house. Immediately. Do you bring anything? Anything special or you just, um, just bring yourself? Well, um, with my grandmother, like she just wants us there pretty much to help yeah. cook, cook. Stuff How up, many people go to the store? Um, pretty much my whole family is usually usually goes over to my grandma's house, but over like the past year or two, everyone moved away. It's like North Carolina, yeah. South Carolina, California. So yeah. this is probably like the first year. It'll just be my grandma yeah. and me and my son. And Remy, my have your teeth always been so beautiful? No, actually, you got I the a, Hollywood teeth. Uh, no, I have my gap fixed. Just these two. This oh is my wow! Gap. But uh, all right, but whiten. aside from the gap. Your teeth are beautiful. Thank you. I got them white, and then I got this my gap fix. They look Hollywood white. Thank you. Well, I, mean, I mean, people like Eve, they've broken off all their old teeth to spend money to get teeth to look like that. That's crazy. Look at Remy's teeth. Yeah, put your headphones on, sweetie. Oh, yeah, put your headphones on. I put them on. So what's the word, Remy, on um, Foxy Brown's retirement? Um, I could care less. Yeah. Like, it really, yeah. It wasn't like she was really here that much to yeah. begin with at yeah. this present time. Like, maybe... A few years ago, it'd been like okay, a big thing. But yeah. she hasn't really been doing much. The whole going deaf thing, though, that's crazy to me. You think that's a lie and I, for, I, for I, attention? I, I think, I think it's impossible for you to be deaf since May and be faking like you can hear. Like I read the story that they have in the People magazine. Like it's crazy to me. It just sounds real. Did comical. you at all at any point, you know, have a bleeding heart for the woman? Um, yeah, actually, still to this day, like you know, what I'm saying, I like really feel bad for her because. She she's crazy. <laughs> she she really yeah. has like, like mentally. Thing, like I don't know thing. if it's mental. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's like nah. Just some people that they are used to getting their way and when things yeah. don't go their way. Like she's just like that's. I think that's her problem. I don't think she's crazy. Yeah. Or she needs pills or how everyone says like that girl is crazy. Yeah. Like behind the scenes because you know how people talk. Yeah. I don't believe that story, but yeah. she just got issues, and at the end of the day, it's like, whatever. So you still got on your, whatever, whatever. <laughs> put your right hand up, put your left hand up. On purpose. That's the cut. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I, I say that all the time. Yeah, now, so. yeah. So, so um, your CD, like, give us the give us the rundown on, on the whatever, the, the, what, the CD containing okay. whatever. Okay, it's called There's Something About Remy. Mm-hmm. We're actually putting it out um, February 7th. Okay. That's the anniversary of Pun's death. Well, I pretty much, I don't think the whole celebrating someone's death thing is is sensible to me, but it's, without him, I really feel like there is no me. So, yeah. being that it just happened, like when they said February 7th, I was mad that they was even pushing my album back. And I yeah. thought the next day, and I kept saying, I'm like, February 7th, why is this right. so in my brain? I'm like, oh my God. Like, all right, we're going to leave yeah. it February 7th. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to do a whole big thing for Pun or whatever. Yeah. And on the album, Everyone's like, who you got featured on the album? Who you got producing? I feel like in so many years, it's people who still don't really know who Remy Martin is as an artist. You wanted everybody else to sit down? Exactly. Good! Good! It's it's 17 tracks on there, and I don't have, like... Your teeth are so beautiful, it's distracting. Thank you. They're absolutely... They're stunning. Thank you. If you... My dentist says, only floss the teeth that you want to keep, so... I floss a lot, and I brush my teeth a lot. They're beautiful! And especially since my gap is gone, like every day, like I never noticed you had a gap. I oh. never noticed you had bad teeth, but I am no, noticing was, incredible gap, teeth today. It was just the gap that was really annoying. Are you and having sex? Oh, all the time, all the time. Yeah, you, are you in love? All the time. Yes, I am actually. You got a regular main steady. How long have you been with him? Um, 
for like a year. You're going to get married? You're um, still young, Remy. How old are you? 25? 24. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't mm. think so. Did you see Eve right last now. night on the American Music Awards? No, I didn't actually. I got to tell you something. I I was telling everybody earlier, and I'm not going to take away from the Remy time to say this, but but that is one chick who really did benefit from the money. Like, she mm-hmm. looked, to me, she looked really good last she night. She looked really nice. Actually, like, if you take a before picture of Eve and before now, like, the more money you get, I personally think the better you look. Yes. And you and, should. And she, and she, she looked really, really nice. looked really good. I actually saw her, I, um, what was it, the um, all hip-hop honest. Have you heard rumors about really her nice. and, and a habit? Because th- those rumors are rampant. See, See, I didn't a black girl like one. you will never know it because Eve has learned how to play that Hollywood game mm-hmm. that she reserves that behavior with Lindsay Lohan and, <laughs> and you know, the white girls in Hollywood yeah. and stuff. Like, like even if you got down, mm-hmm. she already has gotten the memo in Hollywood. She, mm-hmm. mm-mm, she, go- Art, we were talking about that behind the scenes I, too, I right? I heard that one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm condoning. I Eve, mean, I hope not. Mm-hmm. Eve has I learned how to not. play that game. Very I hope well. not. Eve, don't do that. Yeah. It's not cute. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's not cute. It's not cute. So how are things going with the terror squad? Um, everything is actually ex- kind of cool with them. We're extending this just a bit because Remy was a little bit late and, and all the markets, they love Remy Martin. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was late. It's also. okay. We're on a we bunch in the hallway too for a little while. We couldn't get somebody to like come get us. And, oh. You know, said they were trying to call my manager, but for oh, some yeah. reason the calls wasn't going through. It's I don't a, know. It's a mess. So what's going on with, um, the, with the terror squad? Everything yeah. is actually um cool with them. I see um, Armageddon. He's actually... I have him in working on my marketing project. He's, like, really good with the marketing. And he actually um, executive produced a few of Joe's albums, so he's good with that. Um, mm-hmm. I got the word a few weeks ago that Fat Joe was doing a pilot for television. Yeah, he's supposed to be doing a reality show. Loosely based. Oh, oh, it's a reality show. I thought it's it was like, a sitcom. It's a sitcom, but it's, like, pretty much, like, based on his life. It's, yeah. like, it's a half and half because I think his real parents is going to be in it. Wow. And, you know, things like that. Like, his mom and his father, their arguments is crazy. So wow. Like they actually... Do they throw the stuff and call each other names and stuff? Well, it's crazy because his um, father doesn't really speak English oh, like that. Oh, beautiful. So There's the comedy. Like, There's the comedy. It's crazy. There's the comedy. You know, in real life, it's crazy. <laughs> so I can't imagine. But I actually, I probably found out when you guys found out. I see Joe. I speak to Joe a lot as far as like my project yeah. and why we're doing like that. But I don't get to see him as much like probably over like the past year like actually when Lean Back was at his peak we I was had just signed my solo deal yeah. and he had his album so I haven't really actually been with him and yeah. doing things in like a good year now did you always have a cut above your lip or is that something no, new that Gl- Gloria Velez did that to you oh, let me crazy. find out let me find out Gloria Velez is still alive let's not let's Ooh. not get crazy what happened what's that on your lip um actually I got cut in my face in about a year two years ago now September 11th me two years um, in my projects, actually, where I'm from, I was going to see my grandmother. And it's ironic that I say that because I'm about to go to my projects and, like, as soon as I leave here and give yeah. out a thousand turkeys for free. Yeah, I have something on so, you right here. Go ahead. You tell the story so and I'm going to pull up. You're so in the news like, today. At the end of the day, I, I I don't really have any animosity over there. Who but did it? Who did it? Some hooks. A guy. What? A guy. A bitch ass nigga. A guy. I know everyone thinks like it's a girl. Girl would never. It's a guy. It was actually set up. I was going to my grandmother's house. I went every weekend to like take her groceries or was check he on trying my to son. Rob you? It was it was a combination of trying to rob me and just like the overall hate and jealousy of. I don't know what. So what'd your boyfriend say? I didn't have a boyfriend at the time, but what the what it everybody who meets me, everybody who knows me, like everybody's like ecstatic. They wanna go blow up the whole projects. But at the end of the day I'm like it yeah. makes them more sick when they look and they pick up magazines or they turn on the TV or they turn on the radio and they hear me every day and people are like, Oh my gosh, you look so pretty and you look so beautiful. So Yeah. Like Yeah. And to me it's actually Sad a disgrace like that a guy and this is all I got like I mean it's bad yeah right but you would think <laughs> yeah if yeah I'm in the whole way unexpected and y'all plotted and planned this whole thing out like my face would be crazy damn like I have I think it was twenty stitches twenty two eleven in and eleven out so the the CD is called there's something about there's Remy something about Remy and tonight you're performing at the Palooza Club in Roselle New yeah, Jersey and I'm hosting. Oh, yeah. I'm hosting. Oh, yeah. You're doing oh, yeah. it. How, <laughs> how dare you? Nah, how, how long is your set? 
Um, I don't know. I, well, I always go over set. It's probably about like 30 minutes, but I always go over. I do like a lot of freestyle. She, she's going to be giving people I the got, money's worth. Yeah, I got a new mixtape out, so I got a lot of stuff that Talk I'm going to give out. My new mixtape is called The Most Anticipated. It's like a lot of um, freestyles and collaborations that I did over the past few months and a few new beats that I did. So it's Okay. Kinda cool well, right well, tighten up your headphones. I made the, the following beat on my own. I'm knocking on my Are head. Are serious? Like this, look. Are you serious? Okay. Now, you just listen to the beat. Don't get distracted by my bracelets rattling or the head knock. Oh, uh-huh. And Remy's going to uh, rip the freestyle. Affiliates, give us another moment, and then we're going to go into the break. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. Are she serious? She's like, I'm not going to win. That's really the beat. Oh, gosh. Let me see. Come on, girl. Here we go. I'm trying to get it. Turn it up a little bit. Turn my headphones up over here. Oh, over there. I don't know how to do it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, you gotta reach behind the order. Okay. Right. Hey, yo, hey, yo, the girl spits harder than most dudes, and I give it to you on any given Sunday like soul food. I ain't even gotta double my vocals. I do a main some mad libs, and the rest is pro tools. Yeah, I'm in the booth with no shoes, my chain be banging the mic, so I ain't got on no juice. I'm so hot, and I done told you ain't no friend to me. So basically, I don't know you, you don't know me, homie. I clap you with your key. If this was a lay, I'd be a muck. An OG, set up the sirens, form the alliance. It's a full arm blaze and I'm on fire. I was talking to Kanye and I heard through the wire that I'm the truth. It, you're a liar. I'm the queen to rap. There is none higher. No <laughs> slut back horse shit. Call me Sire. Woo! It's Remy Martin, everybody. Look for her new CD in stores February, February 7th. 7th. It's called There's Something the, About Remy. There's Something About Remy. Tonight, she will be setting the stage on fire. I'm going to be there. Where is it? At the Palooza Club in exactly. Roselle, New Jersey. Thank you for the fruit. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. I'll see you Happy tonight. You and it's always wonderful speaking with you. And you were supposed to come into my video. Let's not talk about it. Oh. And, and, no, and when you see it, you're going to be so mad. I'm going to show you the Damn. spot where your face was supposed to be. I'm going to be like, right there. That was your scene. I'm going to show you your scene. Sorry. Where this is it? your anthem. You don't think this goes? with you so much. I know. You gotta open your show with this one of these days. Just, I'm, I'm a matter of fact, give me the instruments when we leave here, tell Jenna, give me, I gotta make Wendy her own. I'm I would love it. Yes. I would that. love it. That's a deal. That. Everybody, okay. we're gonna go into the break. We'll be back to gossip and talk and Remy yeah, yeah. Martin, thank don't you so forget, much. Don't forget, I'm in the Bronx giving out turkeys 6 to 8 p.m. I'm right now Tonight. Castle Hill. Right now, I'm going right now. Okay, all right. Wendy, man. I am looking for a type of job in which I can teach females how to give good professionals. I'm- this hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is being brought to you by Printers. Ah, Thanksgiving Day. A special time with family and friends. Auntie Whitney, Uncle Bobby, and cousin Chrissy. Sure, we've shared our differences throughout the year. I don't even know what the f- you're talking about. No idea what the f- you're talking about. You don't know what the f- But on this day... You're not talking to me. We'll take time to sit back and reflect. Ooh, thank you, baby. I feel good, too. And realize just how much we have to be thankful for. What are we talking to, a f- retard? Something to enjoy as you sit around your home and prepare for your feast. I would love to be able to. It's sort of a Wendy Williams family affair. My mother, my father, my brother, my child. With Whitney Houston. You can call me out my name. Husband Bobby. Hey, this is what you wear. You look like a bag full of f***ing knuckles. And we're here from our friend, Erica Badu, and more. This Thursday, it's the interview that had everyone talking. Wendy and Whitney. Thanksgiving at 2. We invite you and your family to join us for a special afternoon treat. Right here from 107.5. Because you are a fan, I know it. WB. Wendy Williams. You rotten, rude, ungrateful. The Wendy Williams experience. Yeah, yeah. Now dig your. Don't come around here with that Wendy Williams. Get your facts straight or shut Experience. 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 Hi, Jasmine. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well, everybody. It's the lovely Jasmine Guy, a.k.a. Whitley from A Different World. And the DVD is in stores when now? Yep. It came out last week for the first season. Now, so how long ago was the first season? Is it 20 years ago? Um, let me see. 15. 18. Jeez. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I go by school days because I did it first, even though it came out after that. Mm-hmm. So, and that, that just had its 20th anniversary. Well, now, and when, when the first season debuted, um, how old were you? You were always a little bit older than everybody else numerically? I was 20, 
four twenty three when I got a different world. Wow. But you're a very small woman, you know, slight in frame, so you were able to, you know, pull off that very sophisticated yet high school or excuse me, um we were college, college girl. College. Yeah, college girl. <laughs> Hillman. I don't think I could have pulled off a uh, high school because I'm just so mature, you know. No. Uh, we had a, well, you know, technically Whitley was supposed to be a sophomore mm-hmm. in that first season, and Jaleesa was, I don't know. And then the, the other guys were freshmen. Well, this so is. So I was, a, you know. This is just in time for the holiday season. and be, be a great Christmas stocking stuffer for next month. How are you spending tomorrow, Thanksgiving? Eating. Deep, you know, that deep fried turkey thing and yeah. a lot of friends and family coming over. And, I, you know, I moved out of that. I moved away from home so long ago. A lot of my friends are really my family. So we usually hang out all mixed up together. That's fun. And learn and experience. Yeah. Are you still married? Yeah, I'm still married and I have a little girl. Yeah. Six. Yeah. And, um, and I wrote a book about Tupac Shakur's mother, Fanny Shakur. Mm-hmm. I've been touring the country with that book, Evolution of a Revolutionary. That's right, because you were one of the, his close friends that he would, um, from time to time, talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were very close, and when he was shot the first time, it, you know, in New York, I became very close to the family, and I think he would just, you know, we would just talk, and I thought she had a fascinating life, which she does, and I wanted to really explore her years as a Black Panther. But this book goes past that, into her drug addiction, her recovery, and how she's dealt with the death of her son. So it really has, for me, universal themes. How did you... I think a lot of women don't want to talk about, always. Yeah, yeah. The painful stuff, you know. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, how did you and Tupac become friends? It's some, that's almost, it doesn't even seem like it's a likely thing where you'd be in the same social circles, but... Um, well, we met, you know, um, we met on the show, and he and, and Jada have been good friends all their childhood. That's know, right, Tupac. High school, and Tupac was, was hanging out with Jada, so... Yeah. Just kind of, you know, bumped into each other socially, and then um, I think what happened was I spoke up for him at a... Black, at a NAACP Image Award, mm. and um, you know he reached out to thank me for that, and that's how we started talking and talking about projects and dreams and what we were wanting to do, you know, on, in our careers, but also on a community level. And then shortly after that, he was shot, and um, Jada and I flew to New York. Mm. Not really sure, you know, what we would do, you know, yeah. what, what we were really coming into, and. Um, I really didn't even know that he was in court and what was going on with that, you know, kind of on the periphery of all that. But sometimes in crisis situations, you just need to be there for people. Yeah. I happen to be one of those people that was there. I was I was close enough and far enough away. So yes. You know what I mean? I wasn't in the, the middle of nothing, so I could be trusted. Yeah. And, I cared. I cared about the family, and yeah. I cared about his recovery. Now, you spent a lot of time in Philly at one point. Did you ever date Will prior to Jada? No. <laughs> <laughs> there was a crack in your voice. <laughs> well, you know, Will, at one point, he was quite the, the um, Romeo around Hollywood before Jada. Yeah. And a lot of the girls I know who were even, like, on The Fresh Prince, Neil Long, Tyra Banks, you know, they... No, I just, I just forget about that. Yeah. You know, I forget, you know, and his character always had a girlfriend. Yeah. You know, mm. me and me and Kadeem were just locked down. I didn't meet that many people. No, mm. I met people, but, you know, not like that. Were you close enough to Kadeem when he married Shantae Moore that you were at the wedding? No, I, I mean, I'm close to Kadeem, but I didn't, I think the wedding was very, very private. Oh, wow. You know, I, I, I didn't even know, but I had been... You know, around them, uh-huh. around the baby, and, mm-hmm. you know, I yeah. just think he, that was really hush, hush. Yeah, and then they got the divorce. I him, I was like, boy, you didn't tell me you were married. Yeah, <laughs> please. But you know what? The Hollywood relationships, the marriages and the divorces, I mean, they happen some, sometimes so unexpectedly. This week we learned that Morris Chestnut is divorcing his wife, Pam irreconcilable differences and I was just like wow and I look at people like uh, Paulette and Denzel and then Babyface and, and, and you know his wife I'm just like wow Will and Jada and Whitney and Bobby to me are those those, those two couples are together forever regardless and if they get divorced then the world is over 
Well, you know, I, I always, um, even if I don't know people, I feel sad. Yeah. You know, that divorce is such a, you know, it's a heartbreaking situation. It, and I, I, I always pray that people are able to do it the best they can do it. But yeah. it's, it's just, it's like, I remember when Christy Brinkley and Billy Joe broke up, I didn't even know them. But you just want yes. to, to hang in there, yes. you know. You know what? Um, I'm I don't even know the issues. Or not. Right. You <laughs> know what? Don't. I'm like that with um, Heather Locklear and Richie Sambora. The word mm -hmm. is they're having troubles. And mm -hmm. I know Heather and I at one point were pregnant at the same time. I don't know her, but I talk to her like she's a girlfriend in my head. Mm -hmm. And they have their daughter, Ava, and I'm just pulling for them. Well, you know, it, it, relationships are difficult. Life is difficult. And I think it's just when you're going through a hard time and then it's public. Yeah. Um, where you can't really falter. I mean, we all bump around in life. Right. You know, and it's just hard when you're bumping around in front of other people. And then everybody mm -hmm. got an opinion. None yeah. of us know. Yeah. You know, none of us have an answer, but everybody has an opinion. Were you there? Some advice. Are you part of Felicia Rashad's circle? I know you're, you're close to Debbie Allen. Uh, Felicia um, and her husband, when they split up, were you well, part I heard about, you know, I heard about that publicly. Yeah. But, I mean, and I reached out to her, you know, just to call and send my love and my prayers. As I said, I know whatever it's about, it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's I know there's some, it's painful. So, yeah. I don't need to know the details. And, um, you know, she's a beautiful person and I love her kids and. So, you seem like all. you seem like the type of person that would make a really good friend. You seem very, very um, somebody you, you could confide in. Uh, who are some of your close girlfriends that we might know through fame, um, other than Jada? Well, you know, I kind of pick up a girlfriend along the way from every job that I do. Uh -huh. you know, I have some relationships that are at least twenty years old. From the Wiz, I have a very good friend who's now a designer, Gigi Hunter. Mm -hmm also in rent um uh bubbling brown during school days i have a girlfriend named kime who's an actress and dancer mm. um are you an old girlfriend stephanie williams from my fame day wow are you yeah i don't let go of my friends too easily are you it, well they're hard to come by you know well, yeah, and I, like I said, you know, we were really young, so we were more, we were family. Yeah. We supported each other. We called each other when we were out late at night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when we go to clubs, we don't leave the club unless we're with each other. Are you, just, are you remotely close with Lisa Bonet? Yeah, I mean, we had a friendship, and, you know, I feel close to her. Yeah. I don't see her a lot or talk to her a lot in our relationship. We, we were worked together for such a, such a short period of time, but she's a very sweet and, and beautiful person. Now I, I actually saw the baby when she was first born, and now she's probably 20. Yeah, she's, <laughs> I, I've seen her in pictures, and she, she's the spitting image of her mother and father, a perfect blend. Yeah, and very bright and, and beautiful little kid. I remember when she was like 10, I was like, oh my God, she had older than me, you know? Yeah, beautiful. So, um, what's going on regarding Broadway for you? I know you love uh, doing the plays. The last I heard about you, um, you had to cut short an appearance in a play here in New York. Um, a, yeah, a, a with, medical with issue. Violet hour. Yeah. yeah. Well, what happened? I was I I had tried to get out of it. I had a, a you know minor surgery during the summer, mm -hmm. and I, I went in too soon. You know, yeah. and then I, I had to pull out, unfortunately. And yeah. I learned a big lesson about kind of sticking to my guns yeah. and not letting, you know, that, that whole pressure of that. And because I went back to work so fast after I had Imani, after I had my daughter, I thought mm. I could jump back. Yeah. You know, mm. um, but it's, it's hard. Theater is, is, to me, the hardest of all museums because you're in long rehearsal periods and you're kind of performing on a top level yes and um that's that's the kind of energy and devotion it takes you know yeah and so to perform every day and so when you're doing a stretch uh in you know on broadway with the theater you leave your husband and your daughter back home no usually um you know we travel as a family that's um, good what does he do back and forth for work imani may okay. hang out and she's lived in many different cities mm -hmm. and, 
Um, I try to take jobs where she can come when she's not in school. Yeah, yeah. What does your husband do? He's an investment broker. Nice. So you guys live a nice, comfortable, a nice financially comfortable life as well as I'm sure full of love. We try. Do you, do you have, do you have a, do, That's the ultimate goal. Do you have a big house and a pool and all the, the Hollywood trappings? Um, no. Yeah. We, we, we work both from the East Coast, so we still got that flavor happening. Gotcha. <laughs> you know? well, but I got to go. They're calling me to call sister, sister. Gotcha. Okay. Well, she, the word. This is Jasmine Guy, everybody. She's doing her press rounds right now because A Different World is coming out on DVD the first season. It's been 18 years. What memories? Thank you so much for putting the word out. I think it's fun. It's fun to look back at them big shoulder pads. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jasmine. Okay. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, she was wonderful. It's Jasmine Guy. You know, Jasmine, uh, I forgot to premiere um, at the top of the show that Jasmine would be calling in today. I wasn't exactly sure what time we'd get the telephone call, but there it was. It happened so fast. I just had to get right into it. And that's Jasmine Guy, everybody. Season one of a different... I can't believe it's been 18 years. I am gagging. Last night, the American Music Awards was on TV. And um, first of all, let me just address this one. This is from somebody. Your name got... Um, your name got cut off. I think at the bottom it says jokes, jokes, jokes. It says Wendy. Remy goes by the name of Remy Ma, not Remy Martin. That's a drink. So get it right, you fat slob cow. Art, push the moo button. <laughs> Laugh out loud, jokes, jokes, jokes. Well, take this. Remy Ma is short for Martin. You fat, fatter, <laughs> sloppier, cowier. How you doing? Take that, take that, take that. Now, thank you for listening. I love you, too. Know your hip-hop history. It started out Remy Martin. Remy Ma is what it got short for the hood. But I've known her since back then, so it's Remy Martin to me. Peep your history. Oh, Wendy, I was so disappointed with last night's American Music Awards. Mariah Carey's dress looked like a cheap stripper dress. And what's up with Kelly not knowing where her girls are? But she looked beautiful. Someone needs to snatch her up. Yes, she was sitting right there next to her daddy. Yeah. Well, oh, Matthew. I can picture her with Nellie. Mm, 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 mm. Ashanti's got that on lock. And I happen to think that Nellie and Ashanti make an adorable couple. I, I just think that they make a really good couple. Congratulations to both of them. Wendy, man. My oldest brother, he told me he had a really good surprise. The surprise was that he turned himself into a woman. <laughs> the Wendy Williams experience. <laughs> With 107.5 WBLS. Yeah, you can leave that on the floor. Thanks. All righty, Dominique. Mommy intern. Ten, ten soups. Get a soup. Okay. And 10 rolls. Okay. So you said All right. Thank, thank you, you Dominique. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Have a wonderful. Do you need Easy Pass? Do you have, do you need, I have it. All right. She's like, F you and your $6 no. change. <laughs> I'm going back to the bill. Have a nice Thanksgiving, Dominique. I'll see you next week. Bye bye. She's wonderful. Dominique's from Brownsville. She works hard. She's a student. She's a mother. She's a mother, and um, she, and her son has been vomiting today, and I didn't even realize that until about 10 minutes ago she told me. I was like, oh, my God, well, you know, when the soup comes, because she's been helping me gather the food for my family. And so um, oh, that was the last. So now the, the office is officially closed for the day. Nicole abandoned me. No, she left. She went home you know, for her, to her family. Elisa Payne with the lactating breast went home to her son Maddox and her family. She books the show. Already left for the party. He's still here, but he's a user. I'll tell you why he's still here. No, Jim, I can tell you exactly why Art is still here. Jim Wiener is still here uh, in BLS Engineering. Jim, is Mrs. Wiener cooking? You know, I, it's possible that she is, and the reason why I'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> is, that, is that it's a somewhat complicated, not not adverse, but somewhat complicated uh, setup for our Thanksgiving this year. Why? For good reason. Okay. Well, got, okay. well uh, normally, my wife and myself uh -huh. would have 
gone to uh, some relatives of mine for Thanksgiving. Drink while I'm listening to yes, this. Yes, I, I think it's an excellent idea. You might want to start the crickets on. This. <laughs> Uh, but I'm the only one going to to see my relatives, not because there's some kind of schism. Yeah, yeah, and you schism. Know, seven, and you can hit the sting there, you know, if you want schism. also. Schism. But it's not actually No, as that's not the sting. The sting is da. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right. He's got the sound effects. Yes. Right and it's actually not as dramatic as, as it sounds, but uh, someone... Uh, invited my wife and I to Thanksgiving dinner at their house. At their house. So your your wife is going to represent the two of you. And, and, and right, and I will represent the two of us at my relatives. And we figured this was a, a very. And you've been married for what? A month of Sundays. How long have you been married? Well, we've been actually we've been married for several years, but we've actually been together for more than even several years. So this well, is several not a, three. Well, I, and I more. actually I thought that several was far, could be as much F as five. Five and more. But let's see, what is this? Uh, 2005? Yes. 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 2005. Uh, Still got good ears, Jim. Let's see. Uh, I would say, <laughs> yes, seven years. But seven. we've been together for, for significantly longer. Twenty? Uh, oh, I would say, uh, let's see, oh, about 24. Four years. Yeah. Yeah. So you're secure enough in your relationship that family understands that exactly. when you're not together, it doesn't mean we hit the schism. Uh, oh, exactly. Oh, it's nothing like hit that at all. Hit the schism uh, over there. Thank you. Nothing like that at all. Yes. So she may be preparing some food to bring okay. to yeah. the person. That uh, so what's for dinner tonight? I mean, you just go home and you eat I'm, extra for that's left over from that or something? I'm not really sure. I guess we'll just kind of improvise yeah. since tomorrow is the day. Now, we'll I saw kind of take it light. I saw you in the engineering office a little bit earlier, leaned over eating something. Yes. So may, perhaps you're still full from, from that. Yes. yes. I'm trying to uh, eat more earlier today so I won't gorge myself between later tonight. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I just have one quick question, actually. Okay. When crickets are bored and they want to signify that they're bored, do they play the sound of people talking? So I wonder. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but happy Thanksgiving to everybody here in the studio and everybody listening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jim. You Thank too. You. We'll see you, you Monday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that Jim, he is so dry. He's drier than my turkey, which is why I don't bother making it. I love Jim Weiner. He's just got that personality that I just need. Look at this. Oh, by the way, everybody, speaking of dysfunction, because I consider Jim is a part of not just the BLS now. There's a little family within a family going on here at BLS, and I don't mean to exclude any of the coworkers or seem, you know, like, like there's something going on behind your backs, but there kind of is. And it's called the Wendy Williams Experience. And within this 41st floor, there's a whole nother thing happening. And it's called the Pink Room Gang. Art, me, Jim, Shaylin, and the interns, Elisa, Nicole. We've got our own language. Um, we, we have our own fun here in the room and the whole bit. So now tomorrow... From our dysfunctional work family and my dysfunctional home family, and you heard some of that uh, last hour, I am going to present to you the Wendy Williams Experience Best of Dysfunctional Family Show. You're going to hear all the dysfunctional guests you're going to hear. Old DB's family coming in, Flava Flav's family, the Bobby and Whitney interview, the Erica Badu. You're going to hear China, everybody. So, you know, just when you think you've had enough of your dysfunction at your house, just know dysfunction is, is, a, is a problem across the world. A rather nice problem. Entertaining. Yeah, very entertaining. So tomorrow we're not going to, going to be here. Dear Wendy, damn you! Why do you have to write? Why do you have to write this? Yeah, that's. I mean, we've talked about it, you guys. I mean, because we talk about it, you make me feel awkward when I talk to people on the telephone. The whole time I'm thinking of that, and I'm thinking, oh God, I know that this woman knows. I know this woman knows. We've talked about her. Blah blah blah. Look at this one. Here's another one. Look at this, Wendy. Who looks worse, Jasmine Guy or Jada Pinkett? They both look like old. They both look old and hard. No, they don't. Jada Pinkett looks hard, but she doesn't look old. No, eh, you mean who looks worse? Remember her from from Dynasty? She played Dominique Devereaux's uh, daughter, Troy Bayer. That's bad, bad black cracking too. Oh, that's cra yo, yeah, that's bad black. Oh yeah. Uh, this is what Artie's using me for today. This is why he's not gone. I mean, well, I'm not going. I'll, I'm here anyway. You would leave. You would have already left by now. I know That's you. That's that messed up stuff. And no, I know you. You see that I'm having my drinks, and you see that the rest of the office is leaving, and somehow you figure you can filter right out, and I won't be the wiser. No. Stop it. This is, I'm going to tell you why Art is sticking around, and Goose, and you will understand, because you know, as much as Art might love the show, Art 
sh- tries to shirk his responsibilities when he can. This is why he's staying around. Hit the drum roll on yourself, Artie. Artie's sticking around because I have passes coming up in the bonus hour to see Arthur J. Evans star on the stage at this is Newark Symphony Hall on December 10th. And he wants to see exactly how I give away the passes. And he wants to be here to, you know, make me talk about it more by, you know, keeping the conversation going so that the the place is full and his mom's going to be up in the front row all proud of him. I'm going to take the phone calls myself and fill out the sheets. He's micromanaging. I wrote the copy, and I'm going to take the phone calls and get the winners myself. Wow. I'm on top of my business. And that's the only reason why he's still no, here. No, you can no, best not. to believe. Yeah, you can best to believe. I got to judge the the, 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 com- the the freak show later on, so I'm here anyway. You probably have a date at at 6 o'clock at the Starbucks with one of them whores that you meet oh, on the internet. Oh, no. And then you'll decide whether you want to take her over there to the um, judging. He's crazy. No, I know you though. Exactly. You see him with his Dolce and Gabbana jeans and his polo shirt, and his and his low low Caesar. Something's up. When you start. Yeah, something is definitely up. Well, up is that I'm glad to be a part of the show. And then he asked me what size jeans that I wear today, <laughs> and I said why. He says, because I know I know somebody your size, and I I want to get her a pair of high end jeans, and I just want to you know what that means. Artie ha- is feeling a particular woman, and he wants to buy her something nice. So there's a lot going on. I got your gift already. My gift was in stores as of like two, two days ago, right? Oh, I got it already, though. I got it online. Thank you. It's the Oprah DV day. I'm going to wait until Christmas to get it, though. I can't oh, wait. Yes. So please be call number 10. Get them tickets. That's at te- 6 o'clock. In time for the bonus hour. Don't forget, everybody, Remy Martin was here last hour. And, I, you know, I, just, I love talking to Remy Martin. She's so, she's such a lady and so hood at the same time. I, she, she really does have a nice personality. And I can tell you one thing. She could kick any man's ass. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you hear, Sophisticated hood. Do you hear her delivery, like, when, when you, you put the brake beat on and then she rhymes? It's like, wow. Remy's got skills. I don't really know what it takes to, you know, you know, push them out there and push them beyond. I mean, it's it's such a catch catch twenty two these days. It's like ten percent talent, ninety percent what you know, who you know, how you get your machine to work for you, and stuff like that. But I can tell you this: Remy's got a big heart. Now look, in the Bronx, Remy is going to be giving away six hundred turkeys and four hundred hams today to needy people in New York. That's her hometown, and she's from the Bronx. I'm reading this right off of the uh, the press release. The Lean Back MC yes. <laughs> will be on hand at the Jessica Guzman Medical Center, 616 Castle Avenue, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's a, well, that's in Castle Hill? Castle Hill yeah. Castle Hill. Yeah, the only have it here is Castle Avenue. Oh, yeah, Castle Hill Avenue. I'm sorry. Jim is standing behind me. I hate that. You know, because you never know what people, when people stand behind you, Jim, you know what I'm saying? You never know what they're up to. You know, yeah. I think you are right. Regarding what? No, that's just Jim. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That is a Jim delivery. Yes. Well, you know. Yes, yes. Everything has to start with a scientific. Uh, yes, Jim? What were you going to say? No, something? no, nothing. I'm just checking the clocks in here. That's all. Very scientific. Yeah. Is everything measuring? Is it uh, 635 on all of the clocks? Actually, 5. Excuse me, 5. 30, 536. Actually. 536. Yes. It's yeah, 536. Check. All the clocks in the studio are precise. Yes. Looks that way. Then Let we can, checking. then it, everything is right with the world. We can continue with the break. Bonus hour yes. and passes to see Artie on stage. Yeah, I need that right now because we have passes for the bonus hour as well. That's 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock. <laughs> It's two, it's two pairs of show. Oh, it's Artie's man. Mm. Hey, Goose, do you have two contest sheets for Artie's contest over there? Art, that's... Uh-uh, no, 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 no. Excuse me, you're overgiving the prize. You're overgiving the prize. Mm-mm. There's one pair of passes for today, and so one pair is what we're going to give away. There was two in the book. Well, then you need to take that up with the sales department, and they are closed. To, oh, here's another one. You're right. Caller number 10 on the telephones right now is going to see my Arthur J. Evans on stage for Who's Going to Save Me Now? It's time to tell your secret. How you doing? Featuring my mom and dad and Artie's Miss Gladys, that's his mom, in the front row. Yes. 
It's a thought-provoking true story of Arthur playing a gay person. Who what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? What the? <laughs> I didn't say that was about your life. You play the main character, right? Yeah, but he ain't gay. Yet. And you're gay and you come to no, terms. No, what do he done? He was raped when he was a kid. He was raped. Oh, what, what happened to him? He was raped by the cat pastor when he was a kid. And he's having issues with his homosexual tendencies. Oh, he's gay in arts. arts. He had a couple of experiences, but I don't mean he's gay. <laughs> did he enjoy any of them? I think with the pastor he did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. You know what? You've got to see this play. And then meet his mother afterwards. Because that's Miss Gladys of Audie. You ain't going to run me out of Philadelphia. I got my church friends listening now. How you doing, fame? Yeah, Miss Gladys. My parents will be in the front row. Oh, Wendy. Wendy, I think you need to play Hope Springs Eternal to the Human Breast. Yes, yes. Yeah. And all the winners that win these people will have one will be a, a, be selected as my special guest for something special that night. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? I didn't know. I'm, I'm Let's just go to the phone. I would love to get a, your caller number. Uh, caller number one. Your caller number two. Your caller number three. Your caller number four. It ain't till you calling number five. You're calling number six. What are you scared? One of them's going to be a no, gay man no and caller. try to challenge you. There's no more calling. Nobody wants to go to your play. Then maybe we need to hold on to these. No. Do you want to hold on? You're calling number eight. You're hold, You're chewing your gum. You're really nervous, aren't okay, you? Okay, it's eight. You look, Goose. You're calling mm-hmm. number nine. Put them on. I'm you. BLS. Calling. You're calling number ten. I'm calling number ten. Yes, you are. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, turn your radio all the way down. What's your name? Aaron Walker. Where are you calling from, Karen? Lakewood, New Jersey. It's Tara. Oh, Tara. Well, congratulations. You're going to see my Arthur J. Evans in Who's Gonna Save Me Now? It tells the st- uh, um, It's time to tell your secret. Art is the star of the play. Oh, wonderful. And now, who do you look like who's famous? Faith Evans. You will probably be his special guest after the show for something special, according to Art. Oh, wonderful. Now, you get two tickets. Who are you bringing with you? Uh-oh. Probably my daughter. Oh, how old is she? 21. Oh, she oh, can, sit, she can sit out in the car. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a moment. We're gonna, Arthur, as a matter of fact, will get on the phone and take your information behind the scenes and continue uh, his line of questioning for the interview. Okay, thank oh, you. Thank you very much. You and have a happy holiday. Thank you, you also. And shout out to everybody in Lakewood, New Jersey for me. Hey, Lakewood, thanks for turning on your radio station with today's R&B and classic soul and the Wendy Williams Experience, 107.5 WVLS. It's Wendy, the greatest show on earth. Wendy Williams Experience. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Well, you know, this is the end of the show, and um, I want to thank Jasmine Guy, was fly, Mariah Carey's kind of scary. Wait a minute, what about my honey Mary? Rest in peace, Biggie. Happy Thanksgiving to you up there in heaven. Um, Thank you, Jasmine Guy, for calling in. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Don't forget, everybody, the first season of A Different World is on DVD now. It is perfect for nostalgia, a little Christmas stocking stuff for our gift. Um, It's been 18 years since the first season of A Different World. Jeez. Also, I want to thank Remy Martin for coming in. Remy's new CD will be in stores uh, in February, and it's called um, the, what's it called? The The One and Only, Like No Other, something. There's something about Remy, and there damn sure is. And today she's doing her uh, part. She looked wonderful today. She did look good. You know, Remy, you you know what? I I can tell you what's cute about Remy. All that outside stuff is fine and dandy. But what's cute about Remy, she has like, she's got a hood mentality with a mommy softness. Do you understand? Because she's a mother. She's a mother. You could, I could clearly see the soft and pink in, in Remy, the, like the feminine part. And despite, like, I got a fax from somebody. Remy, I got a fax from somebody after you left saying that you tried to seduce one of the um, dancers on your on your set and, and the girl ended up leaving. I never thought of Remy as being gay. 
I gotta tell you something. But if she is, it's okay. Yeah, if she is, it's fine. But I never thought of Remy as being gay. I mean, not everybody that, you know, that talks hard, hood, and rhymes like a dude, and she does. That just means she's got, you know, skills to be on par with a dude, you know? But uh, not... I never thought of Remy. You know what? The right Richard smooths that right out. Yes, yes. That's the right Richard smooths all that right out. Have her going for the apple juice and frying fish at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's right. Frying fish. That's right. Ooh. That's right. <laughs> Coming back to the bedroom talking about, I bought you some apple juice and some whiting with fresh grease. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fresh grease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Remy. And we're going to be together tonight. At the Palooza Club in Roselle, New Jersey. Remy's going to be on stage putting it down. Wendy, I'm so... Dis- oh, wait. Here's the rest of this fax. And Lindsay Lohan was a crackhead mess. Sierra and Bow Wow looked like they were fighting backstage. And what was the point of Gwen Stefani coming on stage to say half a sentence with Pharrell? I, 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 go figure. Go figure. Go figure. I agree. I don't think I don't think Sierra and Bow Wow are much of a couple. I think it's still all a plot and stance. You know what I mean? That's not. I don't believe it's real. Oh, Gay Steve, who's an um, intern here on the show, he's back home in Maryland with his family. Here's his facts. He's checking in. He says it's it's Steve checking in from Maryland. How you doing? I just had to comment on Mimi last night at the American Music Awards. She was so Mariah. See, I'm so mad that I missed her her one and only time on stage. He says she was so Mariah that it looked like someone was impersonating her. Uh, The slit in her dress was higher than ever before. Her legs were protruding to perfection in diva position. Her arms were flailing to the music like crazy. And, of course, the finger to the ear when she hits the last high Mariah note. Fabulous. Oh, and he says, P.S., I listened to the bonus hour yesterday on the bus. Please tell Art that I will see him in the How You Doing room at Don's and Divas. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Happy Thanksgiving, Gay Steve. Wendy, I don't care how many times R. Kelly reinvents himself. Reggae, reggaeton, gospel, whatever. A pedophile is a pedophile, and the sound of his music makes me sick to my stomach all the time. His brother and the trainee in Chicago solidified it for me. I can't wait for the trial to start. Someone's going to pee on him in prison. Oh. Joss Stone has reportedly broken up with her boyfriend, Bo Dozier. In a weird kind of way, I'm glad it's over, too. Why are you glad it's over? Because it clears the way. It's a five-meter one day. I think oh. she's very pretty. Oh. It, you know what it does for me? It makes me say, good. An 18-year-old has finally come to her senses. She's got her money and she's got her fame. What does she need with a 25-year-old boyfriend? You know what I mean? Like, enjoy your money. Listen, she met him when she was 16 years old and was all gaga over him. The entire time that she's been famous that we've known her, and I've met Joss a few times on, on the red carpet and stuff, and I like Joss Stone. And I just, I hate when young girls get caught up too soon because the next thing you know they're going to have a baby and then life has changed forever or they're going to get married do something stupid like that life just changes forever and I don't care whether you're broke as a joke or whether you are starting to make money and have fame like Joss Stone I just think that an 18 year old doesn't need to be in love particularly with a 25 year old grown man who's been around and lived it has nothing to do with the black and white thing. It has to do with the age thing. I like Joss a lot. Well, she reportedly split from her boyfriend, Bo Dozier. He's 25, the son of the, the Motown songwriter, Lamont Dozier, of Holland Dozier Holler fame. And look, he, she even gives quotes. I don't know what happened, but what can you do? It's such a sad thing. I love him more than anything in the world. He's my best friend, and he always will be. It makes no difference whether we're together or not. I still love him. She met him when she was 16. I'm so glad it's over. Joss, one day you'll be able to... Oh, and Jeezy's snowman shirts have been um, um, blacklisted from being worn by students in Polk County, Florida, in the school system. Here's what the superintendent says. We understood that snow is a reference to cocaine, and if that's what people understand the meaning of this to be, that doesn't mean the person wearing it understands. If that's the message it sends, then we take the necessary measures to remove it from our campus. And so they can't wear that. Um, Oh, and Pharrell. His CD has been pushed back. I don't like that. 
Like, he was just on Vibe. He was just on American Music Awards. It's, I, I don't care if it's whack. Do you understand that there's some people who loved what they heard at the Vibe and American Music Awards where he did the same song? The CD was scheduled to come out on December 13th. Perfect timing, so he's still top of mind. As far as I'm concerned, the CD needed to have come out today. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's pushed back until February. The first quarter. Whatever. <laughs> Can I have it like that? You Gwen, it like that. She, she was so whack last night with him. And I like Gwen Stefani, but she just is whack. I love you guys for listening. Look, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, The show is off tomorrow and Friday. We'll talk to you again on Monday. Please come to the table on Monday with all kind of crap that went down with you and your family and why you're glad to be back at work on Monday. You know what I mean? (laughs) Happy holidays from our dysfunctional family to yours here at the Wendy Williams Experience. We love you for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. Please pardon me, boy. (laughs) See you later. Good night. Program complete. Okay. Are they gone? Yep. Okay. We have more to discuss. We got faxes. We've got gossip. I've got advice. We've got tickets to see Arthur J. Evans star on stage at the Newark Symphony Hall on December 10th in I'm Gay, I'm a Homo, I Like Guys. (laughs) Keep it here for your chance to win. Call to comment. Sit back in the cut and just enjoy from afar. However you want to enjoy the experience is fine with me. I'm just glad that you're here. So the bonus hour will stand and deliver in exactly nine minutes on 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is Bob Lee. We at WBLS would like to thank all the listeners who gave the gift of giving this Thanksgiving season and helped make the WBLS New York Food Bank Triborough Food Drive a huge success. Hello, I'm Jenny from the Food Bank, and I'd like to thank our community and WBLS for coming out to support our mission to end hunger in New York City. The WBLS street team and air personalities pitched in to gather hundreds of pounds of non-perishable food items for New York's hungry. Keep up the good work. You really did it. You guys are always there. Special thanks to Atlantic Center Pathmark Brooklyn, Springfield Boulevard Pathmark of Queens, Pathmark of Harlem, and Paramount Pictures. Yours, mine's, and ours in theaters November 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Mommy, happy so good. Here. Uh-huh. Oh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs! She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. A struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that like, where? Whoa, Back whoa. there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What does that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you Gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. Yo, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. Hey, family. How you feeling? Before we get into it, let me just uh, talk to you for a moment about one of our um, premier clients here at the radio station, Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. They're located in Secaucus, New Jersey. And this weekend... Stephanie and Ben, husband and wife who own this place, are inviting you to stop by for a special promotion on rugs. Fabulous. 20 Meadowlands Parkway, Secaucus, New Jersey. The telephone number is 201-617-9000. I'm going to give you the store hours and tell you a little bit about what's all going on there. I'll give you the website, too. They've got the Martha Stewart gallery, uh, signature gallery co- collection, which is like not some crap. I mean, it's the real deal grown furniture. They've got contemporary furniture to, to, to die for. 
I know this. I We have this stuff at our house, in our office here. They've got, listen, if you like traditional, they got that too. I get a chance to look at that in Dion Livingston's office. He's our general manager. In Vinnie Brown's office, you know, I'm not a traditional girl. Surprise, surprise. I like contemporary. But as traditional goes, they've got the mods. As contemporary goes, I love it. Love this stuff. I love the leathers and the silver and the the, the odd shapes. And, and I just love it. They've got something for everyone. And the rugs, talk to Tom. Tom is the rugologist at Benjamin Rug and Home Imports in Secaucus, New Jersey. Tom knows everything. Stephanie has a new line, the Stephanie Cohen furniture line. She sells her own furniture. Do you want a little Asian armoire or would you like something more traditional? Or how about something contemporary? They have it all, my friends. And they're open for you this weekend. They've got a special. And there's nothing wrong with you saying, Wendy Williams sent me. They treat you nice anyway. The prices are right anyway. It's a wholesale uh, store with it's a it's a retail store with wholesale prices. Retail with wholesale. You got it. Okay. Monday through Friday, nine a.m. to six p.m. Saturday, ten a.m. to six p.m. Sunday, noon to five p.m. Go to stephaniecohen.com if you'd love to see before you start shopping. I'll give you the telephone number and the address, and then I'm finished with this. Two zero one six one seven nine thousand. The address is 20 Meadowlands Parkway in Secaucus, New Jersey. Secaucus has been legendary since I was a young girl for um, wholesale prices. It is one of the first, um, what do you call those things? Like Woodbury Common? Outlets. Yeah, first towns in the entire state. I mean, excuse me, in the entire country to do that outlet shopping. Yeah, factory outlets. Secaucus, New Jersey. Always legendary. The tradition continues with Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Priced right. Thank you. Wendy, this is from Ashley and, uh, excuse me, Alicia in Brooklyn. Wendy, a few comments on the American Music Awards. Jada Pinkett looked hard and terrible. Serena Williams needs to fire her fashion consultant. Also, why did they have her stand next to a stump of a man? I don't know. They always do that to us tall girls. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but she's got big, muscular, you know, manly arms and big, just, 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 you know. In a case like that, it would do her good to stop with all the weights and get a little bit of fat on her arms. You know, fat isn't the most attractive, but it certainly detracts from that whole man thing. Gwen Stefani, Alicia says, boring. Eve, apparently lost a lot of weight, looked okay. Yeah, the question is, how did she lose that weight? (laughs) We talked about it earlier. I'm not repeating, sorry. Oh my gosh, my hair is here. Thank God. Get in here. Steve, I'm telling you right now. I was going to be here before 6.30. I was just talking to the guys and saying, you know what? I'm not coming back to Manhattan until Monday. If Steve sets me up where I have no hair for the weekend, I'm going to be really upset. Jeez. Thank you, Steve. Well, now you got to wait until 630. Okay. All right. And the office is, it's unlocked. I mean, you can go sit. As a matter of fact, that sample hair that I told you from that place in Harlem Mm -hmm. is (coughs) Shaylin. It's sitting on the uh, couch or up on top of my filing cabinet in an orange net. If you can help Steve with it, Steve, and then I want you to take that hair with you. I want you to boil it, fry it, do all that kind of stuff. Tell me if it's mixed with plastic and if this is a place I'll, worth getting I'll new hair put from. It in the turkey with the stuff in there you go. Cook it. It, make sure it digests well, and that's how we know we have good hair. All right, great, terrific. Steve's here, everybody. Wonderful. Oh my gosh, what website is that? We look ridiculous. That's ArthurJevans.com. I think that was a really long night. Long. How do you get to your website? ArthurJEvans.com. Go to ArthurJEvans.com. To the message board. 
I think her five-year-old son is about the size of an average 12 or 13-year-old. Who put that uh, caption? Uh, you did? No, no, this is the message board. Jersey Girl did. A Jersey Girl? You're, you're in charge of the whole thread. It says Wendy, Kevin, and little Kevin is the Sims. The Sims 2, or whatever the Sims Who are. Who are the Sims? I don't know. The Sims is a, a game. The game? Where you build a, a you know, a city. Oh, okay, yeah. There's a picture on there. Is that the first picture that people say? No, they have to go on the message board and scroll down to your thread. It says, Wendy, Kevin, and Lil' Kevin is The Sims. Okay. The Sims 2. It looks like it's like 4 o'clock in the morning and we've both had too much Hennessy. We're about to go home and do something really, really nasty and terrible. Yeah. Look how I got my uh, boobs poked out like it's our first date and I'm trying to impress him. He's looking like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're up to something. No good. Up to no good. But you know what? On Wednesday, we would have been married for seven years. What, November 30th. Next Wednesday. This, this coming Wednesday. Well, tomorrow. T is tomorrow the 30th? No. I tomorrow. don't know. We don't do gifts and cards and all that crap. I mean, tomorrow it is. Tomorrow the 24th. Yeah. We'll celebrate our anniversary at the Laugh Factory next Wednesday. Oh. Sure. We'll have drinks. We might have sex in the parking lot. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. married. Do the thing. Seven years. That's, wait. The seven-year itch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've already addressed that. Oh, Thank you. Oh. Both of us have. Okay. Whatever, whatever works. You work out your marriage. We worked out ours. Right now. The, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the don't ask, don't tell. Whatever. There you go. Keep it moving. And keep it moving. Right now. And keep it hot. Yes. And spicy. I love you guys' relationship. Like in that picture right there. Yes, hot and spicy. <sighs> I want to take pictures like that with my wife one day. After being married for seven years. We've been together for 11, though. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> he looks like he has an erection. <laughs> and you're loving it. And I look like I'm loving it, right? Oh, yes. And then there's me and my friend Miss Jones right below. There we are. That was at Miss Jones' birthday party. She looks wonderful. Yeah. And so do you. Yeah. Hey, Jonesy. Do you know what I like when she does? She when she um, when she played that um, she she plays that jump off song and she sings it. I saw you uptown how at the ATM machine. I cock you B. You can't get none or whatever she does. Yeah. yeah. You know, she's got that song. Yup. She's light-skinned with long hair. <laughs> Jones's get to the toe. You gotta love that. Anyway, where was I? Bow Wow was played out, please. Ashanti looked better than ever. What a pleasant surprise. Ashanti's in love with Nelly. They're gonna get married. I think. I don't know. I, in my mind, I hope they do. Let's go to the telephones and talk to people. All right, let's go to line number two. D'Angela. Okay, she hung up. Yeah. Uh, Tamar is on line number three. Is she there? She's 37. Hello. Tamar, you want to know about my chicken liver dish? <laughs> this is so crazy. Hey, Tamar, are you in the car? I am. And guess what? I'm on my way to Maryland. Listen to this. I totally forgot, you know, you're in Power 99. Yes. So I turn you off because I lose the signal coming out of New York. And now, so you, don't have, now you don't have the bonus hour. I don't have the bonus hour, but listen, I, I tu turned you off, and then I came back on, and I was going through the station, and I hear you. Oh. And my daughter's like, Mommy, it's crazy. Go. No. I, I, I forgot she's indicated. Yeah, yeah, right through Philly, yep. Yeah, but now I can't hear you in the bonus hours. I don't know what... I, well, anyway, I did tell the lady I'm calling about your chicken livers because I love chicken livers. But how do you cook this chicken livers and bacon? Okay, this is what you do, and they're slimy and they're nasty. I, don't, I know it. I love them, though. Okay, in, in 60 seconds, I'm going to tell you. You, okay. take, you take a nasty, slimy chicken liver, yes. and you wrap it up in straight-up pork, bacon, fat, and all. As you're okay. wrapping it, you're going to put in there a water crest. For, okay. crunch, for crunch it, you buy a can of sliced watercress. You put a watercress, wrap it, wrap the bacon around the watercress and the chicken liver, put it, put a wooden toothpick in, make sure it doesn't have any of that plastic stuff. Yeah. Put it in the oven, keep them in the oven until, oh, and make sure that you have a drip pan underneath because there's a lot of fat and bad stuff that drips off. 
Okay, okay. W- start watching them hard at about 25 minutes. Start okay. Wa- start watching them. Put the oven on about uh, 350, 375. And I'm going to tell you something. Bring them out of the oven. Let them cool it's like butter. Oh, mm. that sounds really, really good. Tell Audie to tell us that. And, <laughs> and look, Tamar, no yeah. dipping sauce. No, 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 no. Okay, none of that. To none of that. It's die. It's not enough that we have the bacon. We don't need anything else. Exactly. <laughs> Are you doing all the cooking for your family? I, no, but I'm doing some. I'm doing some. Yeah. I, I have to take that because, uh, you know, we love liver in our family. So I was like, I can't, I hear you talk about it all the time. I got to tell you and I'm something. I'm like, I've got I've to gotta cook that. So thank you, Wendy. Thank anyway, you. Anyway, I don't know if I heard the Don's or Divas thing, but am I calling for that? Too? Yeah, no, we're not giving that away this hour. Okay, see, I can't hear you, but that's okay, because guess what? I'm buying mine. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. All I'm right. Mine. Tamar, okay, take Lucy. care. All right, take care. Happy Thanksgiving. You too, hon. Okay. Bye-bye. You know, you got to watch the chicken livers. you got to watch the organ meats. Because organ meat gives you high cholesterol. So, you know, just be careful. And also, be careful with the shrimp. That's high cholesterol. It is delicious. I love organ meat. Yes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's go to line number four. Sandra is 43, and she has breast cancer, and her husband is cheating. Oh. Sandra? Yes? First of all, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, it's safe to you, and God bless you. Thank I mean, you. Without you, Steve, you and Steve Harvey in the morning, I don't know what I would do. Oh, we love you. You for actually sa- keep my life going. Thank you. Just to listen, listen to you guys. Sandra. But, um, so now, when when were you diagnosed? Three we- three to four weeks ago. Oh, so, so you're still ingesting all of this. Yes, and so are the kids. And this is very hard on the kids. How old but, are they? Um, 21, 18, and 13. Yeah. So now, what is what does the doctor say regarding your um, um, diagnosis? Right now, I have options. Um, I could remove the breast, mm-hmm. which is probably the best thing. Yeah. Or um, I could take the chemo and radiation. Which will remove your hair, but there's beautiful wigs out. I know. That's what I kept saying to my kids. I said, I think I better go get a wig now. You know. What Listen, I mean? if if you want, if you want to go for um, a good one, try um, Hadia, and I'll get you her website. I gotta say it on. As a matter of fact, is Hadia's website on my website? Uh, her web address, Hadia's web address. Don't lie, or no, no. Who's Hadia? Hadia. She does. Are they expensive though? No. Well, um, okay, her website's not on there. Hannah's, Hannah's Wigs is um, on 59th Street, right across from Bloomingdale's. Okay. The wigs start, well, you can get a synthetic one for like 300 The human ones go up to like $1,500. Wow. She's by appointment. I can name you a plethora of fame. Oh, I said it. Damn. So you really think I'm going to lose all my hair with this? Oh, thing, I don't right? know. I just want you to have options. I, I know. Well, I, ha- I have an that. aunt. I have an aunt who's um, going through uh, cancer right now. And I recall about a year and a half ago, my sister and I went to visit her. And, you know, part of the part of the reason why she wanted me to visit is because she wanted me to look at her hair and assess and, you know, give a little bit of clipping and stuff like that. Bless her soul. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, you're going to have to choose what's what's best for you. But let's talk about your cheating husband. How dare he? <laughs> All right. So you're well, we, we've been married for 22 years. Okay. And I guess when he was having his midlife crisis at 40, okay. he decided to go out and cheat. Mm-hmm. But that's fine. You know, I could have accepted that. But now he has a daughter with this oh, no. woman. And I have three boys. Oh, no. how, so of how, course, old, how old is the daughter? She just turned four in August. Oh, my gosh. This has been going on for a while. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, he finally told my kids over the summer because and, I guess what I found out. Of course, I kept digging, digging, digging until and, I found what I needed to know. Did you because, find out? Did you find out while she was pregnant that she was ha- about no, to? Okay, no, I found out afterwards. And about how old was after. the baby at that point? Um, maybe about two. Oh wow, it took maybe you some time. Two. Maybe about two. And so you decided to stay with your husband. Yeah, I mean, and we've this been is, together and, so long, and I'm not going to give in to this woman because that's exactly what she wants. Are you? Ha- were you prior to being diagnosed, and where your life got turned? Were you having your own affair? <laughs> okay, all right. Exactly. Our sisters be doing it for well, ourselves. I'm going to be honest with you. When I found out mm-hmm. that he was cheating, I was like, "Hey, well, two of us could play." Hello, this, you know? hello. So of course, of course I did. Why not? I did. But 
it wasn't what I wanted. You know, no. I want my marriage to work, and two wrongs don't make a right. Yes. So I stopped. But you, know? you, but at least you tried, and you felt better with. Okay, I was out there for a minute, and it's not for me. It's not for me. You know, eventually Fair he'll enough. see what's right and what's wrong. Yes. I understand he wants to be there for his daughter. I yeah. understand that one come one hundred percent. What about the jump know? off? Is he still sleeping with her? I'm sorry. Is he still sleeping with the woman? Well, he won't say, but I think yeah, so. That means yes. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not stupid. Of course. Come on. Now, you're 43. Is she, you know, 13? How old is she? The woman is, um, she's 10 years younger than me. Oh, okay, same difference. 43, 33, whatever. That's not the same difference. She's younger. Well, <laughs> I know, pl- I know plenty of forty-three-year-olds who can give a thirty-three-year-old woman a real run for her money. Yeah, is that is that you? Uh oh. You know, but yeah, I think I could give her a run for her money. You know, I know I got it going on, yeah. and he knows it too. You know, my mother would say to me, "Why are you stressing yourself over this man? You're a beautiful young woman, yeah. intelligent." Or why, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I believe that all of the stress that I've been going through for five years actually brought on this cancer. Oh, my gosh. Oh, That's my gosh. That's what I truly believe, because they always say that stress oh, brings on illness. Art, you know? do you understand why sometimes I just let it go? Artie gets so upset with me sometimes. There are certain battles that he feels as though I should fight right to the wall, and he will never understand what it's like like, like to be a woman and, and you know, knowing that we as women, we get things off stress. I mean, people, but as women, we have even more stress because, you know, we're supposed to be, you know, wearing so many different hats. Artie, you've got to understand one day you will. One yeah, day you I- will. It's true because when I tell you, I took care of everything. This man didn't have to worry about anything. Things I like, paid my mortgage. Yeah, I yeah. paid all of the bills. Yeah. The kids, I made sure they got into good colleges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I did everything. This man had nothing to worry about, and that's the problem. Did you give him sex? Did you give him sex on a regular? Oh. Um. Uh-oh. Well, I think that's part of the problem because you know I'm working hard. And, oh. Oh. Okay. And, you know, a lot of times I was tired, and he figured, hey, if I don't get it from her, I could get it somewhere else. Listen, people cheat, or men cheat on women with, who give regular sex also, and, and it's really hurtful. Yeah, I mean, there's no... So what's your question to me? Or you just called to vent? I called to vent. Yeah. And also, you know, yeah. I'm like, right now, I'm in between. I know I'm not going to leave him, so yeah. I don't really need advice of that. Oh, okay. I'm going to fight this woman to the teeth. Oh. I mean, if I die tomorrow... I, I died fighting. Is your paperwork in order where he gets nothing? <laughs> I, I'm saying you need to change your life insurance policy. <laughs> My mother keeps saying to me, you better get your paperwork you better in listen, order. And you better listen to your mother. Yep, because he you shouldn't better get plot. any of the... Right, he shouldn't get any of the homes or anything. Hell no. And you don't even need to let him know that he won't get nothing. You just do it. You need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was yesterday's yesterday's people poll question. How many of you all have wills? 10% of, uh, what percent was that? 10%? 90% said no and 10% said yes. Yes, Mm -hmm. I know, I have to, I have to do it. Listen. But can I just make up a will and get it certified? Is that good enough? I I think you need to speak to your attorney. Okay. And I think you need to do it sooner than later. Now, we know you're going to live. Breast cancer is a livable thing at this point. But what you need to do is make sure that that scumbag, who you happen to love, so I respect you for that, that that scumbag, though, doesn't share anything with that bitch. Yeah. I know. Nothing. Have you changed your life insurance? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. You got work to do. I know I do. I mean, I you really know, you're do. you're gonna live to so celebrate life. Let's let's not be uh, foolish here. But you're well, fo- you never know. You know, you just you, never look. Know. You can. Be- I don't know what God has in store for me. You don't know what God has. No, in store you could be hit by a car though, and not breast cancer, and die tomorrow. So oh. you know, I mean, I'm yeah. just saying. You know, once you have cancer, you always have cancer, and it could always, even if they get rid of it now, it'll come back. Yeah. You, you, know, you need so, to learn how know. you need to learn how to relax though and not stress that but you should probably get your financial work in order and I would go immediately to my attorney and yeah. make sure everything is in order all my T's crossed and I's dotted right okay, okay. well I don't want to hold you up anymore no. we love you very much my kids everyone in the family and I don't know if you remember me from last year at the Christmas party when um, you wouldn't take a picture with me. You wanted to, but your body guy says, no, 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 she can't. And then I wrote you in a letter and you gave me a shout out. What, were we rushing through or something? I'm sorry? Were, were we rushing through the crowd? Yes. Mm. Yes, yes. But I still I'm love sorry you. sorry for that. <laughs> yeah. So take care. 
And if you have any more tickets, if I'm well enough, I want to go. For the Dons and Divas? Yes. You're not going to bring him, are you? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right, because I'm going to tell you something right now. Your next jump off, you could possibly meet on December 22nd. <laughs> and I'm not co-signing on a cheat, but she didn't start it, okay? Yeah. He did. And he produced a child, and she's still going to stay? Yeah. You need some healing. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I have to call back in for the time. Yeah, well, we're not giving them away this out, uh, uh, for the rest of the show. Oh, shucks. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sandra. That's okay. It's been delightful yeah. speaking with you, though. Same here, Wendy, and God bless you, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you, too. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. See, we're peer group members, me and Sandra. You know what I'm saying? She's 30, uh, 43 years old. We, I mean, that could be any one of us. Shout out to my peer group. Girls, that can be any one of us with breast cancer. I'm not talking about the cheating part. I'm just talking about, you know, like when you, when the Thanksgiving uh, grace is said tomorrow, and I don't know who says it at your house. My husband does it at our house. My son follows up. My father says a little something, too. We leave it up to the men. I know that's so sexist, but we, but we do. But in my head, along with whatever they say, I always say a little something extra, and it's usually the most meaningful thing because it's different from good food, good meat, good Lord, let's eat. You know what I mean? I thank God for my health and, you know. And I usually, when everybody else's eyes open up, m I have like a 15-second delay and then my eyes open and never fails. There are always tears there. My own little private talk with God. Yeah. He is queening out on that gum. He is in queening out, no, Goose. <laughs> Tom Cruise has purchased a mammogram machine for Katie Holmes. Or, excuse me, a sonogram machine. He told uh, Barbara Walters that he's one of the most fascinating people, 10 of them. Barbara's interviewing on November 29th. Are you watching that? I'm not watching that. He wants to see the pictures of the fetus, uh, fetus, fetus and the ultrasound waves and whatnot. In the meantime, Katie has decided that, you know, she doesn't want to get married until she's back down to a size zero or whatever she wears. So they're not going to get married until after the baby's delivered and after she's lost her weight. And then, then you know, they're going to get married. Mm, boy. Claudia is on line number three. Let's talk to her. She's 40. She's my peer group. And uh, she wants Hello? to give her opinion on breast cancer women. Hey, Claudia. Hey. I love your name. You have one of my favorite names. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this. Okay. You're giving this lady all this advice and to calling the man's other baby mother mm -hmm. and everything. But you have to listen to both sides of the story. You don't know what this lady has been doing to this man. I she know. She been a nagging. No, well, what I heard is that very little sex. Yeah, but that too. Maybe she could have been a pain. Maybe he wanted to get rid of her a long time. Maybe he'd been trying to break up with her. Mm. And it, it's two sides. And how can you call the other woman a beast? She may not even know that he's talk. married with a this woman and talk. all of that. So, you know, we got to hear his side of the story. You're right, Claudia. And I'm not sorry for her. Oh. And and you know what? She have cancer, could, yeah, but we're that. all going to die. We have to die. Ooh. So when someone is gonna die, it's not it's really cruel. something that Very touches cruel. me. Very cruel. We all we all gotta go. Oh. We gotta go regardless of whatever Let's it is. But you know, I'm hold not on, feeling so of her because she got cancer. She may be a pain in this man's ass. Yeah. So come on now, he's with her for twenty some years with three kids. Where's and your get and decide to do all of this? It okay. has to be okay. something. Enough with her. Where's your accent? Jamaica. Okay. Uh, are you making uh, dinner tomorrow for your family? Here we go. No, I'm going to other people's house and eat their food. Oh, you don't have, um, your, you don't, your family's not coming over? Here we go. No, I'm going to my uh, my brother's house. Okay. Oh, you you don't have um, kids and whatnot? I have grown kids. How old are they? You're 40. Yeah. <laughs> how old are your kids? 20. Oh. And, and uh, oh, how many kids do you have? Two. So where's their father? Can you guys make like like family? Yeah, but I'm I'm a lesbian. Uh oh! oh okay. Wow, the gay thing is not uh, loved in Jamaica. If it's not love in Jamaica? Yeah, the Bati boy and the lesbian. What? Is there a lot of judgment in the community? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, you can't be out hey, as you want to be. Yeah. But well, out here we could be out. Yeah, I was gonna say. So now you're in New York. So you are you out and proud and stuff? 
I'm married. I'm a married lesbian. Oh wow! So <clears throat> we do a commitment ceremony and everything, a big wedding. Do your do you are your kids okay with it? Yeah, and if they're not, that's their problem. Oh, she's just I gotta a live. Bitch, just a they're grown. Bitch. They're grown. Pretty soon they're gonna have their own lives, and I'm gonna be I'll be sitting down yeah. very lonely trying to please my kids. I don't go about pleasing my kids. I live my life for me, and they're gonna live theirs for them. Yeah, I got you. Have you ever been with a man? Yeah. Didn't yeah, like it. <laughs> yeah. When's the, la- was- When's the last time you were with a man? Oh. Uh, 20 something years ago. Mm, yeah, so you were like a 17 year old. So you knew pretty early on in life. Yeah, I always know that's what I wanted. What did when your parents say when you brought. I was in Jamaica, so I couldn't act on it. Yeah, what did your parents say when they found out? You know what? That's their business too. I'm a grown woman. I live my life to suit me. Yeah. That's- Anybody else. So yeah. Whoever don't like it, that's their business. Yeah, you are a hard woman, Claudia. I'm selfish. I'm, I'm about to, I'm, it's all about me. <laughs> whoever don't like my lifestyle, that's too bad. Oh, we love I don't, you. I don't, I don't, like a lot of the people who call you, what my mother going to say and what this. Why you need anybody's opinion if you grown? Yeah. You're grown, you live your life, so that you have to live in. Now, you and your wife, are you guys going to go out together tomorrow from house to house? Yeah. We're both going to my brother's house. Now, does he know that you're a lesbian? Yeah. Everybody knows. Okay. Okay, great. I don't hide it. I don't hide. I never hide anything. I'm too grown to hide whatever I do. Now, when you sound like a real spitfire, you're the one to cause the trouble around the kitchen, around the uh, dining room table. Are you going to behave yourself tomorrow? <laughs> no, I, just don't, I just don't take anybody's crap, and I don't hide anything, and I don't hide whatever I've got to say. Try and to... So much I like it. That's their business. Try to bite your tongue tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, uh, so you I'm going to come to your dance and divas. Oh, great. Terrific. But the only thing is that we're not giving away passes anymore today. We already gave away a pair of passes. I can give you the, the, the hotline number. Do you want to just order tickets and be sure that you're in, or do you want No, wanna... I want to get two of the free tickets. Why are you giving everybody free tickets, and then you want me to buy just because I'm a lesbian, and you don't want I, to buy Excuse me. I want you and your wife there. We discriminating? Ha- I am not discriminating. The lesbians and the gay community have been huge supporters of mine. And I want you there. Make an exception. Well, I already told everybody long before you got through, Miss Claudia, that this hour's giveaway is already life at the party on stage at Symphony, at Symphony Hall in Newark for December 10th. Oh, that's the day before my birthday, too. You want to go see art? No, I don't want to go all the way to Jersey. I want to be in New York. (laughs) Well, then listen to when. That's the best I can tell you. And how you doing? (laughs) How you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Claudia, happy holidays. You too, bye. Take care. Bye-bye. A mess. I was wondering who was going to win that one. Yeah. You did well. Love is love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to win. Like, I'm not trying to fight people. Because at the end of the day, you know, the listeners are always right. But it was like wit for wit. Yes. Well, she, you know what? Thank God she got it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got her and she got me. People skills. Yeah. Well, I've been doing this for a long time, Goose. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to do anything else, don't you know? Mm-hmm. Sell land, come at Macy's, program a computer over at iPod. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. Or you can do the pork and liver thing. I could cook. I could work for a caterer, but the only thing I'm good at is lasagna. And who wants lasagna from a black woman? You know what I mean? Outside of my my two Kevins, who wants to eat a black woman's lasagna? That's not the authentic deal. I'd be putting Lowry's in it and whatnot. Some sazon. I mean, I can get the uh, three equals. <laughs> Come on. You know what I said? Rocco Despierto does not cook with equal sazon and Lowry's in the lasagna. I'd be kicked out of Italy for that one. You are popping that gum crazy. <laughs> Senorita Rita, happy holidays and about the chicken livers. We got to go into a break. Hazel lost both parents at Thanksgiving. She's got a problem with her family. Hazel, if you want to hang on, fine. And True, who's 34 on line number four, found out her husband is cheating and has a police report on the woman. If you want to hang on, uh, you guys on hold, fine. If not, I'm not going to be insulted. We have other stuff to talk about. Um, China, friend to the show, who's part of our dysfunctional Thanksgiving. She's rejudged her whole look. This hour of the show, by the way, is brought to you by Affinity Health Plan.
Epstein. And also this hour of the show is... Oh, God. My brother. Why? 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 All right, let me answer this phone call. My brother uh, is supposed to be coming to Roselle tonight for Remy Martin, so I guess he's calling to find out, is we still on? Yeah, he's a school teacher in Newark. And why are you doing that? You want me to go in there and get a winner for the play in the other room and knock that out right quick? Oh, sh yeah, well, Artie, I wanted to hear the winner on the radio, but go ahead. Here, sure. Yeah. Go, go get a winner. All right. Call in number 10 right now wins to see Artie on... on um, you say Broadway? Yeah, it was on Broadway. Yet, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, Artie at the Symphony. Yes, yes. Newark Symphony Hall. And, yep. And so dial now to see him in I'm Gay, I'm a Homo, hey. I Like Guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's starring in the play. Dial carefully and good luck. It's the Wendy Williams experience on BLS. Hello? Hello? Ah, Thanksgiving Day. A special time with family and friends. Auntie Whitney, Uncle Bobby, and cousin Chrissy. Sure, we've shared our differences throughout the year. I don't even know what the f you're talking about. No idea what the f you're talking about. You don't know what the f But on this day... You're not talking to me. We'll take time to sit back and reflect. Ooh, thank you, baby. I feel good, too. And realize just how much we have to be thankful for. What are we talking to our Retard? Something to enjoy as you sit around your home and prepare for your feast. I would love to be able to. It's sort of a Wendy Williams family affair. My mother, my father, my brother, my child. With Whitney Houston. You can call me out my name. Husband Bobby. Hey, this is Whitney Williams. You look like a bag full of f***ing knuckles. And we're here from our friend, Erica Badu, and more. This Thursday, it's the interview that had everyone talking. Wendy and Whitney. Thanksgiving at 2. We invite you and your family to join us for a special afternoon treat. Right here from 107.5. Because you are Fan, I know it. W B L S. This hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is brought to you by Epson Printers. What's up? This is Shanice, and you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Goose, I really like your efficiency. I really do. So shout out to Sugar from the Drag Kings of New York. Sugar, bring it. Okay. We will turn the mother out. Absolutely. Dear Wendy, my bad. Okay, you proved your point. I will call her Remy Martin from now on, but you didn't have to get gangsta on me like you're from the hood. We all know you're from Ocean Township. <laughs> Love you and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know what? When you're black, regardless of where you're from, somehow we all have stake in the hood. And I don't care whether we're from there or not because we're all just either one generation or one paycheck from the hood. So, you know, and I know that there are a lot of black people. I know I know them personally. Black people who think that they're so damn far removed and so much better than, and it kills me because we have not overcome that damn much. You know what I mean? So. Thank you, homo thug. Homo thug said sorry, Art. He said he'll call her Remy Martin. Now, you can call her Remy Ma, uh, homo thug. Hey, Raven. Happy Thanksgiving, Raven Zarling. All right. Listen to this. Wendy, did you know that Red Man and Method Man have rapping cartoon parts on the fairy odd parents? The fairly... No, I did not. My, my son and I watch that all the time, uh, Timmy Turner. He always asks me. He always says, I wish that I had a fairy godmother. I said, you do. And coincidentally, her name is Wanda. My my son's godmother, my my sister, Wanda. Just like uh, Timmy Turner's. Odd parents, family and parents. Who's the winner? Who's the winner? Oh, Magdalena. Very nice, Magdalena. Where's she from? Roselle. Roselle. She's gonna be there tonight. So she won passes to see you at the play. Uh -huh. What's it called again? Sell your play. Um, it's called um, Who's Gonna Save Me? Time to Tell Your Secrets. And it's going to be at Nork Symphony Hall on December 10th. Yes. You can get tickets at Nork Symphony Hall box office. Or Ticketmaster. Or Ticketmaster. Starring Artie, Life of the Party. December 10th happens to be what day of the week? Saturday. A Saturday. It's a beautiful day to go out and see my Artie. He's the star of the play. Yes. The play is built around you, right, Art? Yes, it is. Well, the character. Isn't that based on your life, though? It no, says it's a no, true, true no, story. No, no, it's a, no, I didn't write the play. It's not my life. It's, it's, you know. Is it similar to your life? No, it's not. Not at all? No, I'm acting. My name is Sean. Sean Art. Sean Art. Uh-oh. What's your last name on the play? 
I don't I don't have a last name. I'm just known as Shawnee. Shawnee, Audie. Oh boy. Orny, Audie. Mm. Orny, on, art. What do you do? On, the- art. Oh. Shawn, art. One and the same to me. Oh. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. After a few drinks. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. I'm just joking. That's great art. Yes, thank you. I left my parents' tickets on the night table. I still haven't acknowledged them. Oh, so, but you did leave them, though. Yeah, you but... You things in this bag a long time. I know, so. I know, I know, I know, I know. I hope their tickets for Color Purple aren't going to usurp the excitement of being able to see Artie on the stage. I know. I got them tickets for the Color Purple, too. They got a, quite a visit. Good, good. They're okay. going to Broadway oh. twice. They're going to take my son to see Christmas show. Good. Fill your heart with Christmas. All right, look, we got to get on the phone. Because on line number four, True is 35, and she found out her husband is cheating. No, I don't and, think so. Oh, she hung up. Yeah. Is Hazel on line six? No. Is no. Senorita Rita on line six? Everybody hung up? Mm-hmm. Well, damn you! Damn you! Oh. The Canadian legislature is looking to bar 50 Cent from coming in. Yeah. They're very nervous. The whole get rich or die trying, the violence, the, the fictionalization... And violent portrayal of his character and the the, the 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 murder ink trial. They don't want no parts of it. So they're trying to bar him from even entering. I'm so torn. I had so much other stuff to talk with you about here on the Gangsta Hour. China, they say, is um, right now pitching a reality show based on her life called Being China. Oh, gosh. Unless we find out her sexuality. I just, you know... Is she is she that interesting? No. Not unless she's, I hate to say, yeah. drunk or high. Hey. Yeah, China. I mean, you're your best. You know, you're most entertaining. No. She's also signed to star in a film opposite Anna Nicole Smith. That should be interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't mind saying that. My girls are coming over tomorrow. Do you want to know we're going to be watching? Uh-oh. Me, Lisa, and Debbie. Get Richard dry, die I knew trying it. the bootleg. I knew, I knew it. Well, they're nervous. They don't want to go to the theaters and see it and be shot. <laughs> so I got the bootleg from Ron in Staten Island, friend to the family. Hey, Ron. Hey, Michelle. We still got your bootleg. Just one more time. Just one more time. <laughs> and I got Whitney Houston from Primetime three years ago with Diane Sawyer. Always entertaining. Mm-hmm. Always entertaining. Yeah. And Lisa is bringing over, God. <clears throat> Lisa Lampanelli on DVD. We love her. And I got the drinks and I got the food and we're going to sit in the afternoon. They're coming over. Lunch is served at 1 o'clock. As a twist, like, let's not go out for girls' night out. Let's, yeah. Let me clear out the house on Friday. Everybody be out, you know, Black Friday shopping. I want to sit in the house. I'll be in the house with the girls and the chief. I mean... Oh! <laughs> The food, you know, I like that. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. Remy Martin is giving away 600 turkeys and 400 hams. Spreading the love. She's doing it right now. She's there until 8 o'clock tonight. If you're a family in need or a person in need, check her out. She's up at Jessica Guzman Medical Center at 616 Castle Hill Avenue in the Boogie Down. She'll be there until 8. Then after that, I guess she's going home to take a disco nap because uh, she's doing a show tonight. At the Palooza Club in Roselle, New Jersey. I'm hosting it. I'll see you there, Chill. Let's go to line number two. Keith is there. <clears throat> Hi, Keith. He's no, he's tw- not, no, no. Oh, line, line number one. Okay. Hello? Hey, Keith. Keith? No, I'm George. Oh, that's George. Girls from, uh, girls from the Marathon Hurricane. What does that mean, George? You're 43. What's going on? The girls that you had, the two girls that you had brought on from... When you had the Wendy Williams um, marathon? Yes. Yeah. Did you ever hear back? I mean, <clears throat> I'm the one. I took them to the airport. You know, I don't know what more is going on with them. They were two women displaced from Hurricane Katrina. I happened to have met them one day. I was having a business meeting over at Houston's on Park Avenue, and I got there early. The two girls are friends from down there. They saw me. They came over and tell, told me, you know, they're displaced from Hurricane Katrina. They're doing waitressing work to send the money back home. I don't know anymore. I haven't, I haven't heard from them. Yeah, because I had brought them out to my church that, that Sunday. <clears throat> 
before she left. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they came back, and I talked to her for a while, but I thought maybe you might have heard something on them since then. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard anything. Now, the second part of my question is, okay. one time I heard you on the show saying, you know, you wear a size 11, and you don't know who to give your shoes away to. And my wife wears the same shoes. So if you need someone to give your shoes to, because she, she can't find no shoes for herself. Wow, really? Yeah. It's really weird because designers are really stepping it up. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there will never be enough choices. Until we can have the same choices as a girl who wears a size 8 or 9, I'll never be satisfied. But you know what? I have this fabulous new intern. Her name is Nicole. And uh, Nicole and I have already started the, the shoe program. Uh. Yeah, she wears a size 11. And excuse me, right. whatever. <laughs> And so we've already started with each other. She's fabulous. Well, she looks like Raven Simone. Uh, Nicole does. Uh, my wife just looks like my wife, but well, <laughs> Wait, I mean, still you can put her name on your list just in case something uh, Nicole doesn't like. She she may like them. I mean, does it matter if I wore them a couple of times? No, not her. It's Wendy Williams. Come on. Oh, but I'm not there, getting. I, there, there's some kind of excitement in those shoes after you wore them. So. I, I would say, I, at the very least. I, listen, I, I would not give them to her. I would sell them to her. I'm a businesswoman. Ooh. <laughs> All right, she'll buy them. Uh, she'll buy them. It's okay? Yeah, yeah. Can you email me your wife's information at uh, wendy at the com? All right, I can do that. George, make sure you include your name so that I know that this is the George uh, husband to the Bigfoot. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then get, hey, that's okay. She got big feet, big breasts, big butt. Oh, know. yeah. Oh, God, God, God. Maybe she's got some stuff for me. I got no, some no, stuff no, for no, her. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, make me come down there. <laughs> <laughs> Georgie, have a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you for Listen, listening. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. You too. Bye. Don't forget to email me, okay? All right. All right. Bye bye. Uh, you know, I just feel as though why give away when, you know, there, we could start a shoe club here. There you go. There you go. We could start a shoe club. Maybe yeah. you have something I want. Yeah. I'll buy them from you. Yeah. Everything's negotiable back there in the pink room. Yes, but let's talk about it over the weekend because we got to go. All right. I got to drop you off, then drop Goose off, and <clears throat> Shaylin off, and then I got to go. Now, you're going to the Laugh Factory. Right now. For the Wendy Williams comedy, ex uh, Wendy Williams Gong, Gong Show. Show experience. Yes, we're judging. Judging. Until 8. Until 8 o'clock. Then you're going to the airport. Yes, you're going to Miami. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Who are you going there with? I'm going alone. Who are you meeting? A friend. Female or male? <laughs> I'm just asking. One of each, honey. All right. Ooh. Your eyes are so glad. You're ready. You're ready. Do the Harlem shake on both of them for me. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you all have a lovely, lovely Thanksgiving. Don't forget tomorrow is the Dysfunctional Family Thanksgiving. And we'll talk again live on Monday. Uh, love you for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day.